everyone. Welcome to episode 23 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. Tonight we're going to talk about the Slexire Futurity. Uh, we're going to talk pretty heavy in the beginning about the first three years and when it first started. We're going to cover a lot of pictures from the first three years and the top ten placings. And then we're going to kind of skip around a bit because it's been going since 1982. So it's a lot of years to cover. I don't have pictures of all the winners, uh, but I do have quite a few pictures. And we will cover the whole list of, of every winner will be on a list. You'll get to see that. I did publish that today on the POA History Group. So we also have a special guest this evening, Tracy Keene's taking some time out of her busy schedule, getting ready for the Futurity. I know she's leaving uh, probably Tuesday, headed for... Uh, uh, Illinois for the for this very event, the Select Sire and the International Futurity. So she's going to join us a little later. I'm going to give her a call. Uh, but first, we're going to uh, talk about some of the early years, and then she'll probably join us about uh, 1987 or so uh, when I get to that part. Uh, first of all, though, I would uh, like to take a moment. Uh, we lost a great POA historian this week uh, with the passing of B.J. Spar. From Indiana. She was one of the top historians of all time in our breed. She was very knowledgeable. She spent a lot of time researching and she just like most historians, she re retained a lot of information, a wealth of knowledge. Uh, she'll be very mi uh, missed in the POA breed and uh, to everyone. And I want to, uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Spar family. Uh, she was a great show mom and a promoter of POA. And uh, she did a lot of things to help the national office when it moved to Indianapolis. And uh, the book on the left there, she wrote that book and researched that book, The Pony of the America's Club, the first 40 years. That came out in 1994, so from 1954 to uh, 1994. Then the one in the middle was a hardback edition, and that was basically the same book, just revised a little bit. Uh, with the next 10 years from 94 to 2004, the Orrin Mixer painting happened and some other stuff. So she added a few chapters, kind of revised it, and the board published it for the club. And the, well, the club did, but the board voted on it. And uh, so it was a little nicer book. It was a hardcover, but it was still her book. And then Dr. Weber from Germany basically took that book with permission and turned it into uh, German and uh, added a little twist of his own. I believe that's Santee Marshall on the cover. I think it is. If it is, he was second in the Futurities of Avi, but it was one of his Santee young colts that he owned and had as a stallion. And he added some chapters in the back, kind of the POAs he was familiar with uh, through the Gene Carr program and through Jan and Dean Rogers. So some pictures of their POAs were in there and a little bit uh, more information that he just included. But it spawned from BJ's book uh, the first one that was from 1994. So, again, thoughts and prayers with the Spar family. Uh, another icon of the POA breed is gone. Uh, but tonight we're going to move on and talk about history and future stuff. The Futurity is, I guess, next week. Uh, I think it's late next week, but I know people are getting ready to go. They've been working on it uh, for quite a while, working on their babies and their young uh, prospects. So. Uh, unfortunately, there won't be a sale this year, but the Futurity remains strong, so that's a good thing. Uh, as I put this list up here, I'm just going to go up here, and there's the list of the Select Sire Futurity. I just want to talk a little bit about the history of the Futurities, and I'm going to, there we go, I'm in the corner now. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so. The Select Sire Futurity, the first one took place in 1982. It took some planning. Uh, you know, the first one was in 82, but since it was a Select Sire and you had to purchase the Sire service and stuff like that, it took years in the making to happen. In 1971, the POA Club held its first international Futurity, and it was a heavy weanling Futurity based on weanlings, but then they started adding other classes too, and then later on it grew into uh, like the Select Sire, you know, with derbies and, and pleasure futurities and stuff and then driving. But in 71, it started, it was babies and then other stuff. And it went all the way to 1981. And then it was replaced in 82. And somewhere down the road, probably this winter or so, I will have a, a cool episode on the 
a little known international futurity. I know there's people watching that probably showed in that futurity and people that won at that futurity. Uh, but you know, nowadays it's really a big part of history because the select sire replaced it. So, and that's our focus tonight is the select sire. It added way more money to the futurity and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the history of that. Now, I did some research in 2002. That was basically 20 years after it started because the winners hadn't happened yet in 2002. And a little bit of a snippet of what I'm gonna read here was from uh, January of 2002, POA Magazine. And I published several months worth of articles about the winners of the Futurity. And it was researched by Missy Korn, Kelly Hauser, and myself. And then I wrote it, and uh, they gave me a lot of good information. I asked questions about uh, PHCs and points and stuff like that and ownership, and they answered it for the first so many years I wanted to do. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. We're not going to go as deep as this article did on that because now we have another 20 years almost. You know, the Futurity is basically 40 years old now. Uh, so, And we're not going to cover as many of the, you know, the ones in the teens and the aughts even, uh, like 2000 and up. I don't have a lot of pictures of those I have here and there. Uh, but the first three years, 82, 83, and 84, I'm really gonna cover strong. And I got top 10 lists. The magazine used to do a really good job of doing that. And they are now again with the year end uh, book. Uh, Tammy's doing a good job uh, putting the winners in and the placings too. It's really important to people uh, like me and breeders and stuff that like looking at all the names that placed and, and where they come from. So as you're looking at this list here, I'm going to get, grab my list so I don't have to stare at the computer screen. There's a lot of trivia that happens on this list, and we're going to take some time. If you want to copy this list, go ahead. I took this list. Uh, I had one made myself up to 2002, and then I never uh, updated it since then. Uh, so for this episode, I went to POAC.org, and they had a list from 1982 to 2019. They didn't have 20 on there yet and they were missing uh, 2015 and 2016 were missing for some reason they just were skipped so i found out the winners of that with help from historians like tracy keen and jeremy stevens uh, helped me out there so jeremy found out that a line i hope won in 15 he looked it up in the, the magazine and found that out so uh, anyway if you start on this list here uh, the american dream won the phillies and she was sired by double tough and Gold Chips won the Colts, and he was sired by a Gold Prince. So the two stallions that really became the most famous stallions in the building blocks of POA is really Double Tough and Gold Prince. They put their mark down right away. Now, Gold Prince would live until 1989. He died at a young age of 14, uh, but Double Tough died even younger at 12, and he was uh, started earlier than Gold Prince. He was born in 70. So when this filly won in 1982, Double Tough was near death already, and he passed away a month later after that filly won. And uh, oddly enough, the next year, another filly of his won. So he was, he was already had been passed away when his second filly won, Doc's Miss Firefly. So he really stamped uh, his mark on the news futurity by winning the first two. And then the Baron was his grandson, and uh, Tracy's family owned his sire, um, tigers, uh, Doc Stuff Tiger. So we're going to show some pictures here so you don't get too bored with this list, but hopefully you got a snapshot of this list. It will be the last screen we see tonight too. Uh, the very last thing we do, we'll go over this list again, uh, but there's a lot of trivia. I might hit a little trivia here just to make it uh, exciting. So uh, the American Dream was by Lin Otto Linda Lovely, and then Linda Lovely ended up having the 87 junior filly, KS is kind of classy. And we might as well talk about that right away. In 87, it was the only year they did a junior and a senior, like an early and a late edition, like a lot of other breeds do. And uh, they went away from it after 87. So you have four winners that year, uh, two in the Colts and two in the Phillies. Uh, QT McHugh was uh, out of Cricket McHugh. So a grand champion mare was bred to a grand champion stay in High Plains Drifter. And the result was the third select sire for charity winner. So that's kind of a cool fact. Uh, Tracy's here. Okay, I know Jan's here. She said, yes, I was right on the Marshall, Santee Marshall. 
Uh, I know she has some connections with that book. Dean's the one uh, that got that book for me, so in the German version. Uh, let's see, what's some other? Poco Pixie, her mother had the second place Colt in 83. Tough Tacos, we'll see a picture of him. Uh, in 88, that was the first year that the same breeder won both ends of it, and that was the Damon family with I'm a Silver Annie and Avatar's Emperor. They were by different stallions, father and son, but uh, they, they won that. I don't have a picture of that this time. I wish I would have got that. It was on the cover, real nice picture. Uh, 89 and 90 were half-sisters. And then, uh, let's see, Tracy, who's going to be our guest tonight, her family and her have bred for three. They have the TC prefix, and uh, they've bred for three winners. And you can tell the longevity of their program because their first one was in 89, and the stallion they bought in 82 had the 83 winner. And then she's had a couple later winners in 18, and, of course, last year, 2020. So three, well, our guest has got good credentials, plus she was in the Hall of Fame, and and they're inducted into the Hall of Fame last year. So she'll be coming up pretty quick. She's joining us now via uh, texting, so her typing. So, uh, of course, let's see, we're getting here to, okay, 91 started kind of a new era. Darlin' Supergirl, uh, her mother was a daughter of, of Darlin' Jill, so she was a granddaughter and super son on one side, but then she was by super son as well, and that started, a, he was in his 20s already when he had his first winner, but then he went out to Gene Carr's place and Santee Superdoll is also a super son and so is Fireflies and Pressum. So the same sire sired the 92 winners. Of course, you see Gene Carr had the winner in 91. To answer a trivia question right off the bat, the leading breeder for uh, the most select sire winners is Gene Carr. Uh, he's, uh, he's bred uh, nine winners, or he did breed nine winners. Of course, the Santee program still continues with his son Bob and his, his grandchildren, so there could be some more Santees. But Admiral was the first one, and then you have Santee Superdoll, and then Papoose won in 98, and then it was a few years down there to uh, Santee Jill, and then later Santee Miss McHugh was both, both conditioned by Paul Filson from Minnesota. Uh, so that was uh, that helped out Gene a lot. Gene had a lot of good people lead in for him. Of course, he had great babies. He could pick. He had the advantage that he could go pick uh, ones. At first, you know, you notice the first few years there, 10 years probably, he didn't have a winner. And it was because, you know, it kind of hurt him being a big breeder because it was too hard for him to get some ready and stuff like that. So uh, when he finally started having people show for him and getting them ready, he started knocking down titles pretty easy. If you count on here and do the math and you only see eight Santees, you would be right. Uh, but the way he gets nine is because in 2002, uh, Cherie Ogden had J.O.F. Skip a Scotch, a great mare. She won as a baby, and then she had J.O.F. Nova Tradition, and J.O.F. Nova Tradition was bred by Jean Carr, not Cherie Ogden, but it did carry her jazzy uh, prefix there. So... Uh, Jazzy O Farm or whatever she called her place in uh, Oklahoma. So again, there's Santee Chic and Highlander, and then you go down. Santee Quivero was the last one. So in 05 was the last Santee that won. Show His Fancy Choice was bred by a family that showed a lot of winners, not only at the Futurity, but at the International Show for Gene Carr, and that was uh, Eugene and Irene Zimmerman from Minnesota, they let in a lot of these babies or conditioned a lot of stuff for Gene that won. And they took some of Gene's breeding and the show his, they used that kind of as prefix. And uh, that was their colt that won in 2007. So uh, some other breeders that bred a lot, of course, uh, the Damons have bred a lot early and, and late. They, uh, again, they had the 85 winner, so the fourth filly ever to win. And then both ends of it in 88, again, the first people to do that. And then Rough and Tough was five years old when he had a winner in uh, 94. She's a tough bunny. And so they had winners in eight, the 80s, the 90s. They didn't have any winners in the aughts of the Select Sire for Charity. Then in the teens, uh, they had the Colt winner in 2015 with uh, Dark Side of Silver. Uh, Bagwell's bred for quite a few winners. Three, of course, Spencer's have bred for a lot of winners. Uh, two Legit and Stilettos and Sweet Cadence, one back-to-back. -back. Uh, I think they're the Breeders Outrageous Cajun. He's their 
from their stallion, of course, and now they stand him. He's a good-looking stud. Uh, so, and then, of course, uh, a modern breeder. They both passed away now, but the Pattersons, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but they bred for five winners. They had MM Big League Asset in 2011, and then, of course, they dominated it in 16 and 17. Uh, they had uh, the Philly winner and the Colt winner both years back-to-back -back with can't traces, untraceable, and then without a trace and a trace of whiskey. Uh, so they put their mark on the Futurity with five times. And there's quite a few other breeders that have won multiples, too, and we'll be talking about that. The Herdman family was always right up there. And some of these people were always knocking on the door, too, and then they finally won one or they won one early and then knocked on the door um, for many years, just like the Lewis family. We're going to have quite a few pictures of gold chips because he was the first Colt winner. Uh, While well, his full sister was second the next year, and then his half sister, uh, Double Deck, was third in '84. So the first three Futurities, the Lewis family had first the first year, second the second year, and third the third year uh, in, in a class. So let's move on to some pictures so you don't get bored on this list. Oh, there's another list. <laughs> I love lists. So anyway, again, if these are not copyrighted or anything, I did create these. I didn't take this off of any official site or anything. The first list I did take a part, portion of it off of POIC.org. Uh, but this list here I created uh, way back in probably 88, uh, I believe, or 87. I typed this up when I was in junior high school. So probably on a dot matrix. I think we already had a laser printer. Uh, but anyway, this goes to 2002, and see here you can see this is the first 20, 21 years, and uh, you see all the breeders there. So Carr is on there quite a bit already, and Bagwells were just starting then. Of course, Doc Nemers was always in the top 10 with stuff almost every year, and he won both ends of it in 97. There's Erdman's. They had full brothers win in 94 and 95. Miss Golddust was the mother of both of those and of course she took second in 83 and she's the full sister to gold chips so she had two sons win it uh, back to back uh, let's some other things that pop out here some of the stuff I'll talk about when we get to pictures so so there's the breeders of the first 20 some years and here's the the sires of the first it is the select sire for charity so the sire gets a check uh, to the owner of the sire so here you see uh, his fancy car being at the end there that's because of Gene Carr and Santee Senator of course and uh, Noches was uh, because of Cherie and then she'd ha bought that one mare or Gene had bred it to Noches and uh, Doc's big time dude won it the same year Rusty Bars same year uh, so you see quite a few stallions represented there that are pretty famous and some of their fame came through the Futurity. So some were great performance sires like Avatar and Paper Tiger, but they also had Colts that won, won in the Futurity. So DH is Adam 80. He was the first Colt registered in 1980. That's how he got his name. He was bred by uh, the Jerry Holm family from Illinois. I know he watches a lot of times. Uh, so his, his DH is a full one in 86. And... Uh, Top Gun was his name. So there's that list. We do have a dams list, even though it's the Slick Sire for charity. I just like giving credit to the dam. And this is a pretty cool list. Again, some pretty famous mares there. Miss Hydeck, Linda Lovely, and TW's Firefly all became household names as brood mares. Uh, Cricket McHugh was a grand champion mare in 81. Tough Contender was Marcy Merrill's mare. Uh, she she helped Supreme it. Danielle, I think, supremed it right at the end as a, like a 9 through 12, but most of the points came from Marcy. She was a tough, double tough daughter and, like I say, a Supreme champion. Uh, KK's Goldilocks down there in 87. She was a Gold Prince daughter. Uh, Strawberry Blonde was bred to our stallion, Chip a Tough, to get that winner, and then we ended up buying her. Uh, Linda Lovely's on there twice. Uh, Let's see here. And Tracy, I'm going to talk about how they started out paying in 1982. I'm going to read it off of the article that I wrote here in a minute. Uh, but just go down through this list. You see some uh, pretty cool names. I know some people are going to recognize some of these names. Some of them are horses, too, uh, Appaloosas and Court Horses. Um, but we're going to move on here. 
Okay, this list might be a little hard to read, so I won't stay on it too long. I'm going to have to look up, but this is the top 10. There was 22 entries in the first Philly class, and this was the top 10. I'm going to just look. Let's say I'm going to take me off the corner there because I'm going to be staring up at the screen. So, of course, the American Dream won, and we see here the top four paid back then, not the top 10. The first few years, just the top four paid, but the Sire winner got a pretty nice check as well. Uh, so the American Dream the Woods family from Ohio, he was an auctioneer. He auctioneered the first couple sales with uh, Doug Sorrell, uh, but he also was a, a well-known uh, halter shower, and uh, him and his wife Darlene did well showing babies and POAs, and uh, they bought the mare Linda Lovely from uh, Kurt and Judy Phillips. So they, uh, Kurt and Judy, were big-time POA people, and they'd bred the mare to Double Tough and then sold it, so they're the breeders of the American Dream but she was owned by the Woods, and they conditioned her and showed her, the Woods family did. Uh, Doc's first lady got her name because she was uh, Doc's tough dude's first filly, or one of them, so that was uh, why she got her name. And then, of course, uh, the Hiva there is for Hidden Valley. That's Harold Slagle. We're going to show some pictures of that. So dude and Avatar would battle back and forth. Uh, they were the same age, both 1979s. They showed against each other as young stallions, and then they ended up having siren careers against each other, basically in the same state or really close, because uh, dude started out in Dubuque and then went, you know, just a little over Doc's program in Hazel Green. And then, of course, Avatar was in uh, Davenport, so by the Quad Cities there. Uh, but anyway, Avatar ended up uh, having a few more winners, but they both had a bunch in the top ten. Now, one thing this Futurity did, too, why we see this list, too, uh, some show parents, kind of like the Lewises and people like that, and some, I don't want to knock it by saying backyard breeders, but people like Paul Passy, Paul and Joanne Passy that only had a couple mares, they could do well and stuff like this. And then look down here at number four, that was a longtime POA breeder, Spud Snyder, Spud and Dottie Snyder from Martin City, Montana, and he placed in the first two Futurities, and here he was fourth with SS Pretty Moolah. So then you go down, of course, the Bunnells from Florida, longtime POAs. Doc Sugar Bay became a champion mare for the Dugards in South Dakota. She won the yearling uh, class as a, as a yearling, yearling Philly class at the national show. And then a BP Magic Moment, I know, had points. And who else we have down there? Oz's Tiger Kitten, I know uh, Tracy, I'll remember her. So, and Mighty Sue, I think, did some things. Charlie Bropes was sire. Mighty Optic was a sire of her. He was an app stallion. So, there's your top ten list of the first fillies. And here you go. Here's, uh, I'm going to put myself back in the corner again. Here's your first winner of the fillies. And this is the American Dream, which was a great name for the first select sire for charity winner. Uh, that's Chris Woods. And then... Uh, that's Doc Nemers standing there, Dr. Julian Nemers. Of course, he was the owner of Double Tough, so he got the big check and a plaque for the sire owner. Here's a second place filly, Doc's first lady, and she went on to have a great show career. I believe she became a supreme champion. She was a good uh, pleasure mare. Here's uh, Hiva Sophia. And, of course, that's uh, Harold Slagle, the breeder of Hive Avatar. That's holding her there, and that was her sire, Hive Avatar. And he would become a household name as a POA sire because of his babies at first, his, his weanlings went doing well in the select sire for charity. Then they started winning grand, and then after that, as I wrote in my book, Spots Included, he had three chapters, basically. He had... Uh, as a baby sire and then as a grand sire, you know, as they were grand champions, meaning that way, and then as a performance sire because a lot of them went on to have great careers. Here is Spud Snyder showing SS Pretty Moolah. All they're all the way from Montana to Des Moines. Of course, the first select sire for charity and the first several were in Des Moines, Iowa, held with the sale in conjunction with the international sale. So that's your top four fillies in the first class ever, 1982. Here's your colt list. 
So, of course, we went over gold chips. And the Kraft family, I was on their place as a, a young kid. They'd already sold gold prints to Jan and Dean Rogers when I was on their place. They had kind of a replacement Palomino stallion. He was a little taller than gold prints. He was somewhere in between like Monty's Award and Gold Prince. I forget who he was now, but I don't think he ended up in a POA program. But I know they had a stallion at the time then. But, uh, of course, they still owned uh, Gold Prince at this time. Jan and Dean bought him around this maturity time, but they owned Gold Prince when uh, the Lewises and the Passies both bred to him. Of course, uh, second and fourth place there is Damons from Iowa. And then you have another Gold Prince Colt in third place, C.A.'s Wrangler. And then you had another one in sixth place, K.K.'s Rocky. So if you go down that list there, we'll start at the bottom. Doc's Dandy Dude became a supreme champion at a young age. He was by Doc's Tough Dude and out of the famous, famous Great Mare 7M's Warrior's Bonnet. And then JBJ's Peppy Joe was a pretty nice gilding. Uh, Double Time was a, them, the bottom three there were all pretty much white. Uh, and then let's see, I don't know much about K, KS's Bug Me Not. Tough Ren Jackpot and Jackpots, my daddy, were stallions for quite a while. And of course, Gold Chips and Wrangler were as well. So there's the top 10 list there. Again, you'll see the payoffs. At this point, I'll get a picture, I'll show gold chips, but while you're looking at gold chips, I'm gonna read this paragraph I alluded to. You've seen some of the monies there and what they won, so this is how it was set up at the first Futurity. In 19, at the first Futurity in 1982, put me back on the screen here, the payment went to only the top four in the Futurity. All stallion service fees, nomination fees, and sustaining fees were put into one big pot. Of the total purse, 20% was split 40, 30, 20, 10 among the stallion owners whose stallions foals placed in the top four of their respective class. The remaining 80% was split 40, 30, 20, 10 among the owners of the winning foals. The purse was split evenly between Colt and Philly classes, regardless of the number of entries in each. Just like today, a three-judge system was used. The payment for the winners in 1982 was $2,710.50. There was 28 Colts and 22 Phillies entered. Okay, so I wrote a little bit more too, but you gotta remember I wrote this in 2001 and it was published in January of 2002. But that's some history there about the first one. So there is Leonard Lewis holding his homebred uh, gold chips. They bred their supreme champion mare, Miss Hydeck, to gold chips. They bred quite a few of their mares to gold prints, I mean. And, uh, you know, that's where Tough Plot it came from. And they bred Cayuga's Frosty Patches to him and got some stuff. But uh, the mother of gold chips, of course, was Miss Hydeck. And she was a half-quarter horse. And then she was Corrid Scottish Chieftain on... Uh, on the other side so the woman in the middle there was the owner of gold prints at the time Lewis was bred to him and that was Bobby Kraft from Minnesota so very modern looking in 1982 he still would be modern looking now they're a little beefier now of course you gotta remember the height limit was shorter than two uh, so but he was by a little horse stallion and a half quarter horse mother but so there he is again there he is as a yearling of course he had a great show career and became a legend uh, as a show horse and just famous because he won the first Futurity and uh, of course his dad became so famous too. There's the pedigree I just talked about. So that was when he was consigned and of course he broke the yearling colt record when uh, Walls from Pennsylvania bought him from Lewis's at the 83 international sale. And there's the congratulatory ad from the Lewis's. That's him as a yearling there. And then he won grand as a two-year-old. That's not this here. This is probably six or seven when he was in the sale again. So he sold in the sale three times, always for good money. So I think the last time he sold was for 4500 But if you guys get a chance, look in the 2002 magazines because I have some in-depth history on the Futurity winners such as 
gold prints or gold chips. I'm sorry. I talk about all his owners and how much he sold for and what he did. And uh, on some of those articles, though, you know, they're, I don't want to be negative, but some of them I talk about if they went over height or if they had points or didn't have points and stuff like that. So I talk about which ones had show records and which ones were never showed once at a, a show. They maybe were just showed at the Select Sire for Charity. So that article was based on a study. Tonight we're not talking about a study. We're just talking about the winners and the history of this for charity. So here's your second place Colt in 1982 at the first one. This is Jackpots My Daddy by Jackpots Image, bred by the Damons of Iowa. Let me look at that picture. What did they hire Tom Selleck that year to show for? Him? Oh no, that's Dean. That's Dean Damon showing there. So in 1982, sporting the, the big mustache there. I thought it was Magnum P.I. holding that Colt. But he grew up to be a fancy looking uh, stallion, Jackpots My Daddy. Uh, Charles Isle from Wisconsin had him for quite a while. Real flashy colt. Here's Paul Passy with his gold prince son, uh, C.A.'s Wrangler. And like Tracy said, C.A.'s Wrangler went on to make a name for himself. He was in Pennsylvania for quite a while. And uh, Passy's and Lewis's basically put gold prints on the map and helped him become famous uh, before the Rogers got him and did great things with him as well. And here is Wrangler. When he was older, beautiful stallion, gold prince son, bred in Minnesota. And here's Dean again with tougher end jackpot, half brother to the second place colt. So these are the top four colts, both half brothers. First and third were half brothers on the top side, uh, paternal half brothers, and then second and fourth were half brothers, both by Jackpot's image, who was the Damon's. Uh, stallion at the time. Of course, Dean's mom, Eileen, was still a big part of their breeding program in 82. So here's the article for 83. Doc's Miss Firefly and the Baron capture select sire for charity. Talks about the breakdowns here, how much money each of them won, and it goes through like the top four. So I just included that there. So here is the list. And what I think is cool about this, and they actually published it in the magazine, shows the judges' placings. And this was kind of unheard of back then, and you don't see it much now. Of course, you hear it at the show. They announce it now. Uh, but you can kind of see, like, Doc Smith's Firefly 10, 10, and 8. Now, her name, Doc let the Scheidecker family use his prefix because it was a double-tough daughter, and double-tough had already passed. So they asked him if they could use it, and he said yes. Uh, but she is bred by the Scheideckers. Of course, the Scheideckers, two daughters. Uh, one was married to Mark Kozer, and one was married to Herb Freetag. And then all three of them had great POAs and did a lot. The Kozers, well, Scheideckers had TW's Firefly. That's the mother to Doc Smith's Firefly. And she would go on to become one of the, on a short, short list, the great broodmares in the POA breed. And then her daughter, Doc Smith Firefly, not only made her mark by winning the second one, but she also produced a champion who we'll talk about later. So, of course, there's Miss Gold Dust. She was pretty consistent, eight, nine, nine. Of course, the nines mean second, eights mean third, 10 means a first. Uh, but you go down there to GR's Moon Maiden, one judge put her first and one judge didn't place her. So that's kind of rough but she still ended up in fourth place. And there's Spud Snyder right ahead of that one. He placed again. So the first two Futurities, he had a filly in the top four. And then uh, GR's Moon Maiden that I just talked about, Carl Stone, who I've uh, gotten to know the last couple of years from doing these podcasts. Uh, his dad was a big supporter and huge uh, breeder in POAs and was the president for many years from Iowa. And... Uh, he let in a lot of good ones, Carl did, and this was one of their later ones from their program. And that's what I mean. There's the breeders that had been around a long time and some of the newer breeders got to compete against each other. So there's a Nemers in fifth, another double tough. And then, of course, McLaren's. You see the S on the subfix there. And, then, and that's before Chief Joseph S, because we're going to see him here in a minute in the Colt class. Dudes Preppy went on to have a fairly good show career. Uh, they named her because Bonnie was going into 
or Connie, I mean, was going into college, I believe. So she was a, a preppy of like a freshman. Uh, and then let's see, WC's cover girl was another dude daughter. So that's your top 10 for Phillies in 1983 at the second one. And there is your winner with Mark Kozer. She was a good looking POA Philly, Doc's Miss Firefly. Uh, they put fly, fire or fly in all, almost all the names and we'll see, they did well in the futurity over the years with uh, her half siblings and then her sibling, or her, her get, her produce later on. Oh, somebody asked what were Missy's placings, okay. If you're talking Missy as, there's two Misses there. If you're talking Miss Gold Dust, because I think they called her Dusty, but Miss Firefly was 10, 10, and 8. So she had two firsts and a third, and Miss Gold Dust had a third and two seconds. So there's the places again. Someone had asked on Facebook about that. Miss Firefly. Yeah, Miss Firefly was two firsts and a third, so pretty good. Enough to win by two points. I really like this setup here. I think it looks professional and it looks good. Uh, you know, that might be something to think about when we're publishing stuff, but it just, it looks cool to go and look like summertime gal in seventh place. One judge put her second and the other two didn't use her. So it's just interesting. You know, everybody has different eyes and different opinions. So here's Miss Firefly again. Here's the second place filly. This is Miss Gold Dust with Leonard Lewis. So her and her full brother did a flip flop. In 82, he was second at the international show in Estes Park, Colorado, and first at the Select Sire for charity. And then the next year, uh, Miss Gold Dust was uh, first at the international show in 83. And then at the Futurity, she was second. Thanks, Terry, for your comment there. Here's third place, as I'd mentioned, Spud Snyder. He loved leopards. He had the devil's breeding, you know, devil, um, so Sir, and the Siri stuff, too. And then later he put some impressive in his program, but he just stopped uh, showing kind of in the Futurity, but he kept hauling stuff to Iowa to the sale. And then this is your fourth place here, Carl Stone with GR's Moon Maiden. So that's your top four at the second Futurity in 1983, top four in the Phillies. Here's your Colts at the second Futurity. So the Baron was bred by uh, Olin and Patsy Ziegler. They usually used Oz's, you know, the OZ's, but they said it was Oz. Uh, prefix like Oz's Sweet Speculation and a whole bunch of Oz's. Lannan's Sweetheart had a bunch of Oz's foals that did well. But this year, they around that time, they started going away from it. They ended up breeding a select sire winner and didn't have the prefix. They had a grand champion stay in Tough Jet, and he didn't have the prefix, so they just stopped using it for a while. But here again, we see the placings. He's got a, a third a first and a second there. And that was quite a big win there, 28 to 23 points. That was kind of a landslide. Tough Tacos, just like the Philly had taken second, Miss Goldust, he was, uh, and she was first at the international show, he was first at the international show as well. And he was only six weeks old at the international, so he was still pretty young at the Futurity as well. Uh, but we'll see a picture of him. He was by East Acres Chippa Tough. That'd make him a half-brother to Kiddo Tough, Tough Tacos. And of course, his mother was tough contender, uh, since so she became the mother to Poco Pixie, who won in 1986. This list is a pretty cool list here. Uh, the Baron was a beautiful colt, and he turned out to be a beautiful stallion too. They didn't promote him and breed him a whole bunch, but when they did, uh, he had some good-looking foals. Tough Tacos became a pretty good gilding, won quite a bit of stuff. He sold at the sale for quite a bit of money as an older gilding. Of course, Avatar's Mucho arguably could be the top on this list. Uh, again, another Damon product from Iowa and a son of Avatar. He became the 88 Grand Champion Stallion, and I think he was a Supreme Champion, and, and he became a pretty good sire, too. I think his foals have won close to 30 national titles. Uh, 
Talanka's little devil. We'll be seeing a picture of him. I don't know too much about him as an adult. C.A.'s Magnum was a leper, again, from the Passy family. He went out to California. I think the Rosbergs had him in California. He was a stallion on the West Coast for a long time. Uh, Reams win or lose became a grand champion gilding. So there's two grand champions in this class. Uh, Levi became a very famous uh, POA. He was international champion as a yearling and a two-year-old in the stallion class. And then he became a, a great gilding out in uh, Indiana, show gilding. Chief Joseph S., uh, great sire again. He's probably got more wins than Avatars Mucho. I think he has 30-some wins. So a lot of the S ponies for Betty McLaren after Charles had passed away uh, came from the, their homebred stallion they kept, Chief Joseph S., an own son of Siri Wonder. Uh, Billy Bright became the junior champion gilding the next year as a two-year-old. He was your junior champion winner. He so won the yearling gilding class and then went on and beat the two-year-olds. Uh, of course, he's Mighty Optic, the Mighty Bright uh, grandson there from uh, Charlie Bropes in Ohio. And then St. Nick's Easy Money rounds out the top ten. So, again, if we look at these placings, Avatars Mucho, the kill judge for him was the second judge. Because he had, he would have won it. He had a second and a third, but then he had a what is that eighth or ninth? I guess. I guess two means nine. So and tough tacos, same thing. He had two firsts and an eighth. So those two there both got hammered. But the Baron was pretty steady there. A first, second, and a third in a class that tough and that big, uh, you can't complain about that. So. Uh, I hope you enjoy these lists. I, I enjoy these lists here. I mean, I just grew up reading these, and that's how I learned so much about POAs. There's a lot of information on that page right there. You got the owner, which most of the time was the breeder, and the sire, and the name of the colt, and then how they did. So we're going to see some pictures of them now. I know Tracy doesn't uh, like this picture, but I love this picture of the Baron. I know he's all bunched up there and stuff, but it's just a cool picture with Patsy. Uh, changing the number there, straightening the number. And I was actually, what, 11 years old when this picture was taken? And this was our first select sire of Fichiri, and I seen this picture being taken. I didn't know it at the time, but I was standing waiting for these colts to go in. And uh, I, we had just got there to Iowa, and somebody said, some Minnesota family that already met us said, hey, the Fichiri's going on right now at the pavilion or whatever. So we walked over. We were greenhorns, you know, in, in 83, really green. And we got to watch this loud-colored, beautiful colt uh, win the Fichiri. And then we ended up knowing the Zigglers real well after that. So here's the official win photo. The POA club didn't put up a banner the first few years. They used that fence outside at the fairgrounds there. That's Darlene Woods standing there with Olin Ziggler. I think she got him ready. She might have showed him, but I think I'm pretty sure Olin showed him. But, uh, of course, again, he's by Doc's Tough Tiger. That helped him. Uh, get on the map as a future premier sire and uh, his mother was a mare that Ruth Picoy discovered in a like an open sale an Appaloosa mare called the hired girl she hard shipped her and consigned her to the 80 international sale 1980 and uh, the Zigglers purchased her for a lot of money like 45 or 4900 for just a brood mare she was a pure Appaloosa mare but when they crossed her to their young stallion at the time Doc Stuff Tiger uh, they came up with the Baron who ended up winning the Futurity. So there's Tough Tacos. He'd won the International that year, and that's his young owner at the time there, Marcy Merrill. Marcy's still around riding horses and stuff. Of course, uh, her sisters, uh, Teresa Loth, Terry Loth, and, of course, Danielle Kruger, now Danielle Kimry. All three of them were involved in POAs and still involved different ways. Terry was a judge for a long time. Marcy bred for a lot of champions and a lot of good stuff. Of course, their mom and dad, Bev and uh, Gordon Kruger uh, was the KBCs, Kruger Bear Creek, and uh, Danielle still breeding POAs on that property. So there's Tough Tacos by East Acres Chippetuff and out of Tough Contender. He placed second that day. There's your third place winner with Dean. Dean looks like he got a different suit from 82 with, a, with all that money. I'm picking on Dean tonight. I love you, Dean. I'm just trying to be funny, but... You know, he took second and fourth in 82, so in 80, 83 here, he uh, 
he ended up third with Avatars Mucho, but Avatar, arguably he became one of the most famous in that very tough class. So and he was a put together baby. Of course, it'd just be five years later he'd be grand champion for the Shockers. That's right, Tracy Daniels, new stallion. Uh, the Myers uh, bred him, Ron and Nancy, and uh, Danielle owns him now. He won Get a Sire this year, guaranteed equity. Shout out, shout out to him. So here's your fourth place. He kind of looks like a yearling in this picture, but Talanka's Little Devil and Barb Sullivan, that's, she's from Florida. That was your fourth place weanling that year. We're back at the fence there in Des Moines. So that rounds out your top four in 1983. There's Levi who placed in there. That's him as a yearling. There's Billy Bright that placed in that class. There it says what I said. He was a junior champion the next year as a yearling. So that brings us to 1984. And Tracy, I'll be calling you here in probably 10 minutes or so. QT McHugh and KS's Tigers Breezing Cat capture 1984 Select Sire Futurity wins. Uh, Tigers Breezing Cat became one of the best uh, Select Sire stories ever. Uh, he was just one and one as an adult. Every family that owned him was happy that they owned him. Of course, KSs are known for their just durable POAs that one and one and, could, and kids could, you know, do whatever with them. And, and he was one of them, KS's Tiger's Breezing Cat. So his mother was KS's, JW's White Lighting's mother. And then, of course, his sire was Paper Tiger. And colts like this help make Paper Tiger famous. QD McHugh has a great story of her own. There's Wayne Latch. Of course, Wayne uh, father, Elroy Latch, and his mother, Helen Latch, were famous POA people. Elroy passed away in the early days of POAs, and Helen became the secretary uh, treasurer of the POAs. Her name was on hundreds of pedigrees early on, like you see now, whoever's on the executive committee's name stamped. You know, like Dave Morris has been, Pat Burton, Ken Steele, people like that. You'll see it stamped on there. Well, in the early days, for a long, long time, it was Wayne's mother, uh, Helen. So Wayne and his wife, Judy, raised uh, a nice family in POAs. They bred for some great POAs. Of course, they bought Cricket McHugh at the national sale, bred her to Marlene Borjohn Stallion, uh, High Plains Drifter, who we seen a picture of last night. And... Uh, or not last night, last week, I mean, because he was a grand champion as a yearling. But another fact, her parents, this filly's parents, not only were both grand champions, they were grand champions the same year, 1981. And then 1984, she come about, QT McHugh. So I always liked her because I knew even back then she was homozygous with that big snow cap. And we'll be talking about her again. So again, I like this picture. I'm going to pick on Wayne a little bit. He's staring off in the distance. Uh, is he wondering what he's going to do with all that money he just won, or is he trying to figure out where he's going to hang that big uh, clock? Because that's a huge clock there. Uh, but then were cool awards back in the early days of, of the Select Sire Futurity. So Cutie McHugh, 1984 Philly winner. Here's the second place winner, Doc Slick Chick. And uh, Jackie Nemers, another good historian of POAs. Uh, she used to come to all the events. Uh, she's one of Doc's oldest kids, if not his oldest kid. Uh, sh she was a great exhibitor. She told me a story about this filly right before they went to go in the ring. They had her all cleaned up, and she flipped over backwards. And, you, of course, you know, you still know these babies when you get a bunch of them together, 20 or 30. Some years it was close to 50. Uh, it'll be... You know, sometimes they can get rambunctious. And she had to go in the ring. He, she said they tried to wipe her off the best they could. Well, here she is right after the class. And uh, she still managed second place. So, again, she was a Doc's tough dude daughter, uh, Doc's slick chick. And that's Doc Nemers holding her. There's Double Deck. Of course, Leonard Lewis uh, was a great handler of POAs. He, uh, when his mare wouldn't have a baby, he'd go get somebody else's baby and show it that year. Of course, this was the fourth baby they produced by Miss Hydeck. The first one was Bug Me, and then, of course, Gold Chips, Miss Gold Dust, and then this filly was third. Again, she won the international as a baby, and again, as a yearling, two-year-old, and a three-year-old, uh, she won. But uh, 
she's the only one to win the first four years of her class. And she's a Doc's Built Tough daughter. But Leonard had that reputation of standing in front of him, and he'd be even further away than that in the ring. I know when he showed gold ships, some people talked about that, and I seen him in Minnesota showing at state shows, and he'd set them up, and they'd just stand like a statue, and then he'd back up about maybe four feet or as long as the the lead line sometimes, and they'd just stand there, and it was pretty impressive, and I think it impressed the judges too. Here's your fourth place filly that year again. This is a Minnesota family. This was kind of a product from Bud Campbell, but uh, the Quas family uh, used Bud's breeding program. They had Campbell's Jill for one of their riding ponies. She was a little bitty POA, but she was bred to Bud's Freckles Fury app stallion, and out came CJ's Fury's Princess, and she captured fourth place in 1984 at the Futurity. So here's your Colt winner. I've showed better pictures of him. If you go back to episode, I think, 12 or whatever ones about Ken and Pat Steele and KS's Pony Farm, I have some colored pictures of him there and a lot better. This was just one I snapped out of the from the wind photo. Uh, we go back to the backdrop there in, in Des Moines. That's their son, Kenneth, or Ken, and Chip, they called him, uh, his nickname. And that's, again, KS's Tiger's Breezing Cat, who grew up to be a great looking stout POA and a supreme champion and just one of those all around uh, been there done that show POAs. So he won the Futurity in 1984, the Colt class. Second place was a Hive Avatar again and that's Avatar's Gambit and that's a young Jill Arp there. Of course Jill became Jill Ellsworth, a great uh, show person in POAs, Jill and Dale and they uh, they had a good connection with uh, Hive Avatar and with the Slagles. They ended up uh, conditioning Avatar as a 10-year-old when Harold decided to get out of POAs, and uh, they consigned him to the sale and a bunch of uh, Avatar babies. So that's Gambit in second place. Third place is Prince of Gold, the Gold Prince son, uh, a Borjan product. Marlene Borjan has bred for a lot of great POAs, especially good-looking uh, halter POAs. This is her son Mark that is known for doing a great job conditioning them. And this was your third place Colt, Prince of Gold. He went on to be a pretty good gilding. This is Dolly's dude and Larry Gibson. He was a Doc's tough dude and I think Devil's Dolly was his mother. I think was how it is. I know it's dude on the top side but he, uh, he was in quite a few sales, international sales and was a gilding in the breed in the club. So he was fourth place. So here's an article, or not an article, actually an ad that I'm gonna read. And it's by my good friend when I was in POAs, Dr. Julian Nemers, and he wrote this in 1984. He said, the third select sire of futurity is now history and most of us would agree that the excitement is still equal to or surpasses that of the international show. I have some facts for your consideration before the next breeding season gets underway. Of the six Futurity classes held thus far, Double Tough and Sons have produced four winners, the American Dream, Doc Smith Firefly, the Baron, and now QT McHugh. Think about that. In three of those four winnings, Double Tough Fools also produced second place in the same class. Doc's First Lady, Tough Tacos, and Doc's Slick Chick. Further, Double Tough and Sons have produced 14 of a possible 30 placings awarded to Phillies since the inception of the Futurity. This year, Granddaughters of Double Tough won 6 out of 10 placings, including 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Think about that because next year's payments will go to 10 places. At this time, we wish to thank the many serious exhibitors who bred tough and bring their foals fit and ready to show. We are proud of you and proud of the pony that made it happen. Of course, he's talking about East Acres Double Tough, who had already had passed away for us, been passed away for a few years when he wrote this. But I remember reading that when it came out in the magazine as a, a kid, and I just thought it was a great ad as a breeder. You know, it's no bragging, it's just all fact, and he laid it right out there, and then he announces that they're going to go to 10 placings, which they did. So, 
Tracy says, I still believe I'd rather win no event more than the slick set. Yep, would rather win no event more. Well, as we, as I just read Tracy's, we're going to look at a picture of her there. And I'm going to get my phone and make a phone call. And don't say I'm calling Ghostbusters. Call. Let's get me on the corner here. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, how are you doing, Tracy? Oh, busy. Busy. Well, hopefully, <laughs> busy usually, fitting you're busy fitting babies. Well, you're usually the person that I ask, can you hear, like, can you hear Doug or can you hear Kelly? So somebody else needs to chime in tonight. Can you hear Tracy? So just say something, Tracy. Hello. So, say how hard you work today. So. Oh, goodness. We went out and we wetted babies and worked them and bathed them and sweated them and after we got done bathing them we practiced the standing up <laughs> that's still a big part of it that's a big part yeah they can hear you tracy so that's good i remember my dad drilling it into me if we're gonna go spend money and do this you know you're gonna stand those babies up we're not gonna be embarrassed and of course i i like I enjoyed doing it really because you know once they get it you know that's pretty cool to stand there and have them just you know, I, pose. I always think they're going to be bad when we get there. <laughs> and this year is no different. <laughs> right. Yeah, and some of them that do good at home end up freaking out at the show. And some of the nervous ones get to the show and they're deer in a headlight and they'll just stand long enough to be judged. So it's kind of yep. funny that way. But yeah, it's a challenge. Right. It's a lot of work. Well, we're staring at a picture of two time Slick Sire Futurity champion. Uh, Doc's, uh, Doc's Tough Tiger, and you're st sitting on him. That's you, right? Yeah, I was about 16, I think, <laughs> maybe 17. 17. That picture was taken by a local um, newspaper. We were still in Washington State at the time. Okay. And uh, I don't even remember why they were doing an article. I don't know if it was after the Baron one, but we were still in Washington. Right. So. Okay. So he was probably, I'm guessing, maybe four there. Okay. Yeah, because he was a 79 model. So he won the Futurity as a sire early because he won the second one, and that would oh, have God, been yes. in 90 or 83 when the Baron won. So, and then yeah, you, we, go ahead. Purchased him in 82. Right. So, and we never had ventured back to the sale. We We bought him from Washington. Somebody went and bought him for us, but... It was a big thrill when we got the call that the Baron had won. It was just, yeah, right. we bought the stallion, young stallion, and there he was. Right. He won one of the the breed's biggest futurity. The same thing know. happened to us, except we were second. You know, we uh, we didn't have nothing to do with him, but Tough Tacos, we'd bought his sire that year, and we, we bought him right before the international show, and Tough Tacos won the show and then was second to the Baron. And uh, we're like, wow, we just bought the stay, and all of a sudden he's getting famous. You know, no one really knew Chippa Tough before that, where, of course, Tiger had a show record and stuff. But uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Well, I included a couple stallions here, him, because I knew you were going to be a guest, and he's a two-time uh, champion sire. And then uh, here's Avatar. He had arguably one of the biggest impacts, especially the first 10 years. He did have the biggest impact on the Futurity uh, his folds were in the top four. I think I wrote, I know I wrote it in his story, and spots included like 10 years or something or more. He didn't have a full uh, not place in the top 10. And uh, yeah. of course, that's when Marlene my, bought him there. My favorite was of his was the Avatar's Mucho Horse. Yeah, yeah. And then I didn't show an adult picture of him because I don't want a, too much repetition. I showed one of him last week being grand. Uh, but, you know, he went on to do good things, Avatars Mucho, and uh, he was cool. Of course, Damons really bring in their babies fit, you know, especially back in the 80s. And he always said, did you like my joke about Tom Selleck? I hope I didn't. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've, never, I've never actually noticed that, how much 
you're right. And when you look like, at it, I'm yeah, <laughs> he's tall. It's gonna be, when I was a chubby little kid, I had a show against guys like him and Leonard Lewis and Mark Kozer and all kinds of people like that. And I was on Dean, you know, and I'm like, wow. And when I'd get next Dean, to Paul, I'd feel a little better because he was about my height. It's Paul Passy. But. <laughs> Dean's program has been, no, if nothing else, you can say it's known for its longevity. Right. But it's been quality. The promoting whole... winners, breeding winners. Right. You know, and he's still doing it today. It's right. amazing right. The, the, what the, his program has done for the breed. Well, we'll be talking about him more in a few, well, it might be a month or so. But episode 25, I decided 25 is silver, so I'm going to talk about the silver POAs on episode 25. So I got to do an episode in between there, 24. Uh, I may take a couple weeks off because of the futurity now. So I'll let you guys travel next week and then recuperate the next week. And it's tough oh. for me to do one every week. I mean, if I was retired, I'd get one out every week and I'd probably have them polished. But trying to work 60 hours a week and, you know, do other things and oh, do it's rough. But I, but I miss you every Tuesday. <laughs> I know it's I know. Wednesday, I know. but I miss you every Tuesday. And I feel bad because Jeremy sends me a message. You know, my good friend Jeremy and Julie from Kansas, and he sends me a message, won't be on the show live tonight because we have a concert to go to. And I'm like, oh, I just, my heart, because I'm a day late, you know. I'm like, well, he goes, but well, I'll watch it tonight. When we get home, I'll watch it. And I'm like, oh, wow, if I would have been Tuesday, maybe you would have got to watch it live, you know. But Yeah, well, it just last night would have been a terrible night for me, so I'm glad. If oh, you I'm glad it I tonight, postponed but... it. Yeah, I almost had to postpone today because I woke up not feeling well, and uh, uh -oh. four or five people told me to go home today, and I I just kept going through it, and I said I have a podcast tonight, so I got okay, through it. I, I see we're moving on to eighty seven, which was in a unique year. Yeah, I skipped a few, little bit. I can't talk about every year we'd be here till midnight. So no, no, no. I, I realized that right. that was an unusual year. Because of the junior and the seniors, and it was in Indiana, yeah. And what happened was we had a very large class and a very small class. I right. I think they, they did it by age. I think so. I think it was junior and senior met early and late, yeah, is what, yeah. yeah. And, but the KS is kind of classy, Philly, I believe, having been there, that she probably would have took it all because she was a heck of a she, little Yeah, we have pictures of her coming up. Let's see. There she is. I can go back to that list, but there she is with Chip Steele. And I was thinking that it's funny you say that because I was looking at these pictures and I like her better than the KS's Philly oh, that won yeah. the senior. Uh, oh, yeah. She's smaller. And, and then, and, but Unfortunately, they lost her in the fire. But right. But Paige Schwink rode her in JPFC. That's right. And she was a little bitty mare. She never. Right. She was. I don't think she ever got over 51. Now, it's kind of ironic little. because the Woods won the first Futurity with a half-sister of this one. You know, Linda Lovely was yep. bred to Double Tough. Phillips did that. They bought the mare, sold out the American Dream. Well, then the Woods sold this mare to Steel's bred to Tough Jet. So the Steel's are not the breeders of this mare, but they, they owned her when they fold her out. So that's why the KS is kind of classy. Uh, but, yep, yeah. yeah, she's a half-sister to the one that won in 82. So, um uh, she was a heck of a mayor. She was, yeah. And then here's our list. Yeah, there was 11 entries in the large fillies and four entries, or senior fillies, I should say, and, and only four entries in the junior fillies. So there's oh. KS, the Strawberry Twist. And then Jan, Precious Gold, went on to be a good POA. She was a gold prince daughter. And, of course, Darlin' Jill, again, is on a short list of great brood mares and just great mares, you know, supreme champion, versatility winner, uh, famous famous mare and uh, she was the mother of the 85 colt i didn't mention that tonight but uh, he's on the list so and then some kind of fame went on to be a known poa right ks is some kind yes. of fame yes yeah. she did she was the supreme champion i'm sure and tiger's lucky lady was i believe i think she was one of those oldest pony award winners or something yes, like that yes and she was also a supreme champion right so while you can i can't see the list on my computer i have uh -oh. my computer pulled up and the, the list is very blurry. Yeah, so. it is blurry. It's, you know, I should have did a little better. I was probably sitting oh. on a couch watching a football game. Uh, <laughs> taking well, I, I kind of think it's my computer, but. Um, it is kind of yeah. curved. But anyway, them are kind of, Doc Sweeties in there again. Doc Nemers had one in the, in the top usually all the time. 
And uh, then there was another JN, but we'll go off that list. There's the strawberry Wasn't twist. Was perfection a straw pony? Uh, yes, he was. Yeah, we're going to yeah. get to him. They bred a mare to our stallion. They took a mare to our house and uh, bred her, and uh, we had her for like two months, and Dad fell in love with her, and we ended up buying her year later, a couple of years later. Bred her to okay, Kiddo Tough. Yeah. On my, on my screen that I can see sitting here, was Strawberry Twist, and that was one that Missy Corn rode and rode um, at JPSC. Right. That's her husband, Todd, that showed her there. And, uh, yeah, she was a nice filly. I mean, you know, she just, I, I like the cuter little filly better, but I can see where this yeah. filly won her class. Well, no, and, I think the little filly would have beat her, but right. the Strawberry eventually ended up being really a pretty, pretty mare. It's funny they didn't go for overall or something, you know what I mean, or all four colts. That would have been... A cool thing do the two studs and the two fillies because you would have had four in there then you know and you could yep. you could have brought the second places in but you know it's kind of like in 86 when the height changed and they uh they had the superior that only lasted mm -hmm. one year well and in 87 they were kind of having growing pains the poa club and they just decided to do this but luckily they only did it one year because it really didn't work that well no uh, it didn't no Here's the seven entries in the junior Colts, and there's perfection that you mentioned, and he was bred by uh, the straw people, Fred and Jan Bruner from Fall Creek, Wisconsin. They owned Double L's Dickens, and uh, Strawberry Blonde was a daughter of his that they they re tried to register, and the office wouldn't register her back in the day as a as a POI, you know, as regular papers. So then they didn't mm -hmm. ID her back then. You could so that's why it says POA type. But she was a full sister to many, you know, many POAs, but they just didn't register. So nowadays, you know, she would have had to been an ID. But she had a lot of roan in her, but I could see at the time why the club didn't didn't register. But she became the mother, well, she was the mother actually before this of nearly doubled Strawberry Blonde ah. was. When they bred her to her half-brother, Straw Boss, outcome nearly doubled. And she was a great mare. But, oh, no, she was. I yeah. looked at her, I think it's the, one of the first sales we went to she was a yearling yeah and we went and looked at her and we were like whoo 86 she was a yearling that filly had so many outstanding yearlings in it fillies and she was one of them my dad wanted to bid on her so bad and doug sorrell kept turning to him but we'd bought quite a few that year privately you know we had double suite we'd bought yeah. and speculation and we'd spent a small fortune on mares that year so we couldn't buy her but dad wanted her because uh we'd already had her mother at our place that summer or spring so uh, so that's yeah that's the Colts there and there he is with Fred that's perfection he didn't live very long he he got sick and they ended up giving him to somebody to try to uh, keep him going and I don't know what happened there but he didn't end up with a career he died as a yearling I believe uh, but he was a pretty he had chip -a -tuff's color and kind of the straw smooth I would have liked to seen him move you know because the straw ponies mm -hmm. and then chip a tough was the sire of kiddo tough so had some good performance oh, yeah. yeah there was a lot of performance there. right so here's the seniors again there was only seven in the juniors and there's 15 in the seniors and uh, kk's mad max was a pretty big colt uh by built tough and out of a a gold prince daughter before they gelded built tough right before they gilded built tough and then tiger's high class was a good Ended up a good gilding. Yep. Yeah. I, I think he might have been our supreme champion as well. Right. Now, 83 was probably one of the best classes ever. Like, if you talk about draft classes in the NFL, you know, 83 mm -hmm. was tough. But this one here, the only thing is the winner didn't go on to do anything. You know, Mad Max didn't have a career at all. But Tigers High Class did. Takapa Gold, you know, set records. You know, won, won his halter class mean to like misdirect your show or anything but i remember reading and maybe you wrote it something in the magazine it was on the sweat sire winners and it was how they the winners never they it was like the curse that was me yeah that was okay. i got it right in front of me i stopped doing okay. it because the people that bought one of the families that owned the 84 colt wrote me a letter and I was on the board of directors at the time. So they wrote it to Mr. Director and they sent it to Indianapolis. So when I, not to my house. So when I got to a meeting, they put it in front of me and I read it and it just wrecked my whole board meeting because they were saying how they didn't care for my article. 
and they didn't like any knocking of the select sire for charity and that their their select sire for charity winner was a great poa well i bragged about him you know i'm just saying there was certain poas like mad max this, you know this was written i think after 1989 because ours was one of the few that also went on to be congress champion you know right. but it, you know there were very few for a while there that did anything i think Maybe these days, yes, I'm looking at the the later list. A lot of these are going on doing something, you know, but for a long time there, there were the select sire fraternity winners. They just poof, disappeared. Right. You know, and you were right in your, in your article because when I went through the list, I'm like, yep, there's, ours is only one of the, at that time, you know, I don't remember when that article was written, but I was like, well, yep, the one that, our first, our first winner was one of the few that went on and performed. But right. I think a lot of the select sire winners went on to be in the breeding program. Right, they um, did. I'm reading what I wrote about Mad Max. He went over height, and he was purchased by Jennifer Pennington and uh, for her junior pony. And then he went over height, and he was sold to another family in Michigan. But when I wrote the article in 2001, I wrote it, and it was published in 2002. Uh, it says that he was still owned by... Julie Pennington, you know, was the owner of record all those years later. He was ever was never transferred. So and he never went permanent and his record shows that he was shown twelve times. He earned hundred and forty two halter points, uh twelve two grands, two reserves. All his points were earned as a weanling. So that's what I liked about the articles. I and Missy Korn and Kelly Hauser, both employees of the time at the time by the POAC, they helped me research this. You know, I'd call back there and they looked up all this stuff. Like, did the, some of the things I wanted to know was did they go permanent? You know, and did they have a show record past the weanling? And uh, yeah, so. But anyway, the rest of this list. I mean, Hi Ho Silver went to Minnesota for a while. Uh, Let's see, Cash a Tough Bill did well. KS's Tiger's Cat Dancer did well. And, of yep. course, Takapa Gold uh, did. Yep. So, uh, yep, so let's move on here. There we go. There is Mad Max. I mean, he was a good-looking baby. He was a Palomino because of his Gold Prince on the bottom side. So Gold Prince was his grandsire. Okay, now I'm skipping to 1990. So I skipped yours. I didn't have, you should have sent me a picture of TC. Uh, I didn't know you needed one. Well, that's I will fine. I'll you a picture and you can figure out somewhere else. Yeah, somebody. well, well, you know, we're still going to do a f show just about you someday. So he'll be, he'll be there. You don't so. Do a show about me. Jan Nine, says, well, about 30. your friend. Jan said it was a real mess. So that was in, in 87. And her cult puts, took second. So. Uh, but this guy, why the why a picture of him is in here is because he did something that uh, I don't know if anybody's done it since, but he was the first one to do it. He won the international show, as you can see in this picture, and then he came and won the Futurity. And I don't, I know a Philly. I don't think a Philly's done it, and I don't know if another Colt's ever done it since. I've lost track the last ten years. I haven't been paying as much attention. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to just make a comment about our 1989 winner. He was <laughs> dead last in the class of eight at the international that year. Okay. And then he, and that, yeah. and then he we came back, what, three months later and won the Futurity. Won the Futurity, yeah. Well, it's so tough. And nowadays, and I know Kozer so, started kind of doing this and some other people like Lewis's would show their babies at the show, but he even kind of stopped showing his babies at the show later on. Uh, he just showed them in the futurity, but well, people would just ha keep them home and wean them and then get them ready for the futurity and not yeah. show them in the summer. Well, that's kind of where we're at because we're so far from right. Congress. I mean, I right. took one last year and he won the Congress and then we went to the futurity and we got nailed by the third judge. We were second behind the, the, the cult that won unanimously owned by my good friend, Charlene. Right. And I was like, when they, the first results came out. I'm like, oh, cool. We're going to be right behind her. And then we got a nothing. A nothing. Yeah. And it dropped us all the way to fifth. Right. But that third judge will get you. That's oh, yeah. More, I've got, gotten bit by the third judge more times than I care to think about. I call it the church. kill judge because it just killed your show. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this is Chip and Z here, and this is Larry Gibson. 
he bred for this, of course. He uh, by Chips Lady, or out of Chips Lady. I mean, that was a good mare they got as a yearling. Man. Yep, and she had a lot of dudes chip and dip, and she had a lot of a good, good uh, babies. Yep. So, and then Chip and Z was a stallion for quite a while with Jake uh, Weagle from Wisconsin. So, uh, if you see yep. a lot of the Z's that came out of Wisconsin, they were by Chip and Z. So, uh, yeah, we had a mare here that we bred, I don't know, probably a long The tiger was still alive, so it's been a while back, but she was by Chip and Z, but she was out of that Campbell's Foxy Lady mare that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That mare was a hell of a mare. Right, because he had that, that was over in that area for sure. So here's the 90, let's say 91 results, I believe. So a Santee won the Phillies, and Fireflies and Pressum won the Colts. Again, another Scheidecker. Uh, product that's their granddaughter Corey in the picture, and uh, of course that's uh, Shirley and Dick Scheidecker, and uh, they produced a lot again. That mare TW's Firefly and then Doc Smith's Firefly, uh, they did well in the futurity with her stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite. Uh, well, I don't know if he was my favorite, but I knew. I remember telling John Anderson, I walked out, I said, well, that was a no-brainer. And he kind of looked at me first, but then he got what I meant. I, when Cowboy Brass won in 86, or 96, yeah. uh, I know Lewis was in there with Crash and Burn, and he was a good colt. And there was some other good colts in there as well, like there always is. And there was probably close to 50, but he stood out so much. And his mother had won, you know, Doc Smith's Firefly was was the second winner ever and then here her colt yeah. comes and wins and he was just so conditioned to a t you know just yeah looking at this list i see a lot of winners sired or sired or out of winners right you see a lot of that so that tells you that you're you need to look at your pedigrees when you're breeding that's right you know breeding because will will show that's for sure uh breeding okay. pays off so Yep, their uh, kiddo never did really great in the futurity, but thanks to Jackie and that mare, Shady Lady, he had some. We're going to actually see a picture of Cagey Lady when Kennedy's bought her. I was just picking pictures I could find randomly, you know. So, uh, but, and Billy McHugh, he's, I got a picture of him. There's Scarlett's Rep Butler as a baby. So, of course, he was bred by, Fancy. yeah, bred by Gene and, and made famous by the Kinchlows. The Thunder Rolls is in that story. Him and Scarlett's Rep Butler are both in that story. of, And so is, let's see, uh, he's not in, did he place in here? Though? But anyway, uh, they're in that yearling story. Yeah, the, they all are. <laughs> now, can, I'll tell this story really quick, but at the 1993 International, so it would be, this is 92 here. I said 91, but it's 92. So these babies, when they were yearlings, you had Frankly Fantastic, Santee Skip Oak, uh, Scarlet's Rep Butler, and the Thunder Rolls, for sure, were all in the yearling colt class. And when they first announced the placings, the Thunder Rolls was first, Scarlet's Rep Butler, I believe, was second, and uh, Frankly Fantastic was third, and I think Skip Oak was fourth. Well, Skip Oak and Rep Butler, there was something wrong with the numbers. I believe Chest, that. Ch yeah, Chestnuts had owned Skip Oak. I think he was a big Palomino. But Gene was going to show Rep Butler or something like that. Well, then Hank Frieder let him in. And so anyway, they, they re-announced it. The Thunder Rolls, one judge had put him on the card twice. So uh, been there, done that. Yeah, and so like he, and and he, to me, he was the winner by far. He was the a big body colt condition, uh, the Neblocks had him in there. And they took that real hard because they dropped. He'd already went in and won like junior. You know, they judged for junior, yeah. and they called back the yearling colt class, knocked him to fourth. Rep Butler then was would have been the winner, but he was DQ'd for the back number. It, the wrong person was showing him that was registered. Yeah, so... Frankly, yeah, frankly fanta fantastic ended up being grand that day. right and he was the third place <laughs> you're like but, just, see, oh i would feel so bitter still about that yeah and it was hard i mean it cost some you know it did I cause did, a lot of i never pain. knew that story until you told it a couple weeks ago I was right like, i told that what? yeah yeah that's one that because i was standing there i was sitting in the stands watching it and i just remember it and i'm like wow 
you know. But then a two-year-old went reserve grand, Abdul's grandson, and he was the reserve grand. But anyway, yeah, there's the list there of both of them. So then in the Phillies, you have uh, Palisade was one of Cody's first babies. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else do we have? He wanted to be a show mare. Yep, a good mare. And then Etched in Elegance became your high seller for a while. I got a picture of her. Yep. And yep. this was the era when uh, Gene got uh, Super Son from Bill Coulters, and Coulters had Admiral for a while, and uh, then he had, you know, Gene started using Super Son because of his heavy wheeze camp breeding. So there is Santee Super Doll, and that's Russ Smith. Of course, Russ was a famous uh, exhibitor in the horse world, but his fame in POAs came from... Uh, Santee Hancock. He led in Hancock many years for yeah. the Bozidan family that lives lives about 70 miles from where I am here. They used to, so in Alva, Oklahoma. But uh, And then there's your Colt winner again. That's Corey Kozer and her grandparents. So then we're both super son babies that year. So, so here's yep. the 93 list. We're moving right along here. So you got a lot of Santees in this list and a lot of Super Sons, uh, but but Jackie topped the class here. Snowstorm was first and second uh, that year. She was a beautiful filly. She was a beautiful filly, and that her filly by that mare's filly the year before was sixth out of kiddo, cagey lady, and then shady lady ended up winning it. Uh, but yeah, shady lady was a great brood mare she was just a heck of a mare and she had good babies by a lot of different stallions but especially kiddo and snowstorm mm -hmm. and there she is there's jackie with that blanket just looks like you you stenciled it on you know what i mean that lacy blanket yeah, so, i don't know whatever happened to her because she was a beautiful filly yeah i don't did marlene get her marlene borgia you know there's a there's a place somebody needs to go look for because she still has POAs, and she has yes, some she, great broodmares yes, and fillies. Would. Yeah, and Mark would yeah. handpick stuff and go show it every once in a while. You know, he won grand two years in a row with that broodmare. And, uh, they, won, they, won, they won some stuff at Missouri, when we were at the Congress and, or the International in Missouri. Right. I remember, I remember Mark leading something. I don't remember. Right, that one mare. That, yeah. I forget her name now. I'm a something, I but... She was the first, maybe the only mare to win grand from the broodmare class. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so there's your Philly winner. Now, here's your your Colts. So, Skipping on Stars was uh, owned by the Pony Farm, Barb and uh, Barb. And Barb. Is that of course, their only one of them winner? is. Uh, well, they're not the breeders of him, by the way. Oh, okay. They, uh, they ended up getting four babies out of that great mare. Now, Gene bred Tough Plot it to a quarter horse mare. Some people from, I believe, Mitchell, South Dakota. Maybe, no, it was Nebraska. They lived in Nebraska. Their last name might have been Mitchell. I'm getting screwed up. If Jess is on here or somebody, they can talk about it. But uh, the first one was Buttercup. Speaking of Marlene Borjan, Buttercup oh, was purchased by butter. her at the sale. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I remember that. I was there. Yeah. And then uh, Barb and Susie, found, you know, discovered it. And they started going and... Remember Santee Lacey Star? And yes. I'm a skip a, or whatever that one mare is. I'm a skip a star or something. But it, eventually, the pony farm ended up with Buttercup. Yeah, well, they ended up with her. And then Shameless is a full brother to this guy. He was born the next year, that leopard stallion they had. But they were yeah. all by Tough Plotted and out of that Wee's Camp bred quarter mare. That was just a, that streak of stars. She was just a good cross to Tough Plotted. You know, she was a good mare. And uh, they, they realized that. That's why they went and got their their stuff. But, yeah, you can see some names here. Talk about Futurity names. Uh, Tough Plotted, Rusty Bars, Snowstorm, Tough Plotted again, Avatar, Crusader, Tough Plotted, Super Sun, Twister, and Doc's Tough Dude. All those guys did well in the Futurity for years, you know, all those sires. Yeah, they so, dominated it. Dominated, yeah. And, of course, Santee Spanish Nick down there in ninth. He became one of the shorter famous Santee stallions. You know, the chestnuts made him famous. He was a beautiful stallion. And then he went back to, I think Jody rode him her senior year, uh, Jean's granddaughter. But he was a nice, he's the sire to Nick Spitting Image. That was a grand champion stallion. So, yeah, yeah. he was 
reserved behind speaker the, the year speaker won. Right. Yeah. Plug in. Plug the speaker. And then came back the next year and got grand. Right. You did. So here's Barb and Barb. Of course, one Susie. Barb and Susie from the Pony Farm. And that's Mark Borjohn there. And that's the champion that year. Oh, there skipping, we go. Yep. My picture's a little stuff. delayed. Well, I just put it on. I just popped it on. I had the list for a while. Bob Hedledge photo there from the Futurity. Now, here's a colt that didn't win, but Doc Superstar. And he, uh, you know, Doc had the record. He says that in this ad, too, that his family and farm had the record for many years, the wheeling record with Built Tough. And then, well, actually, it was broke pretty quick. But then he got it many times over with wheelings. But he broke the record with this snowstorm colt, Doc Superstar. And I think this is one of the first ones Linda got ready for him, Linda Schoenfeld. And uh, he was never one of my favorite Colts. I remember Dad said he was pink. Even in this black and white picture, his color was a funny color. And uh, of course, it's Snow's funny you say that because people are. <laughs> I had someone here at the farm yes over the weekend, and she describes my niece's mare as pink. Now well, I can see that kind of a salmon color. That must be yeah. Jess that says that, and that's what I said for. Uh, Four full siblings. There's four. Yep. Shameless was the youngest of that group. And then Santee, Lacey Starr became your grand champion. She was a beautiful big body Palomino. And then Skippa, Lady Starr, they did pretty well in uh, JPFC. And then, of course, Skipping on Stars uh, won it, followed by at least five half siblings out of Streak of Stars. Okay. So there you go. I know Bonnie Lewis rode uh, Skippa, Lady Starr, and she was shown in. And a lot of futurities and stuff. But anyway, another reason I showed this picture, Doc Superstar, I think he went to the Northwest, but I know he became a sire for a while, but his mother was one of Doc's best mares, and that's Doc's double zip, and yep. she's the mother of Rough and Tough. There you go. Yeah, Kiddo and Snowstorm was bred to a lot of the same mares, you know, because of Doc and, and Larry Gibson and that whole group. And Jackie. And, and of course, Jackie mainly, for sure. Yep. So, okay, moving on. Here's Avatar's Golden Ace. He placed in the Futurity one year. That's Cindy Sokola. Uh, he was an Avatar full. So here's, uh, let's see, 33 entries this year. So Marshall Jake won it. Of course, Erdman's had two full brothers that won it. And, um, <laughs> They, they dominated for a couple of years. They dominated yeah, for we a were couple in Oklahoma, of years. Oklahoma, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, well, the last year in Oklahoma, and then the first year in Iowa, because in okay. eighty in ninety five, yeah, and uh, Cowboy Up here was the full brother to the one I'm talking about, Cowboy Brass. Cowboy Up was a big bodied colt too, but he didn't have the head that he was a Palomino with the blanket, and he didn't have the head that his full brother did, and I always thought they. The good name Cowboy Up was on that one, and then Cowboy Brass, that's a good name too, but he's the one that ended up winning and becoming a famous gilding, you know, Cowboy Brass. Yes, did. I remember him. Yep. Yep. So, and then look at who's 10th on this, in this Futurity in 1995. The Silver Kid placed there you go. 10th, yep, as a baby, so, and he's your number one sire now. So, pretty cool. Of course, Wooden Shoes are on there, the Van Eyck's. Great long-time breeders, you know, they weren't always breeding for futurity horses, but they got in the top four there in 95. So was that they, with the, I can't see the list. Was that with, that's a Colt class or? Yeah, it's Wooden Shoe Golden Hancock was his name. Okay. Uh, that, course, I, think really, I think he ended up with um, Nikki Carr. Okay, that could I be. Think. S. A. I S.A. Pot think. of Gold was a gold prince daughter from Jack Spanable in Iowa Park, uh, Texas, and then, of course, Santee Hancock. She ended up, she ended up here in Florida. Yeah. The S.A. Pot of Gold mare did as a brood mare for the Sullivan. Okay, yeah, well. And I think she might have been the dam to. Well, she's the dam to this one. Which one? To Golden Hancock. She's oh, the okay. dam to, yeah, so Van Eyck's must have got her somewhere along yeah, the line from I Sullivan. Yeah, but she ended up being the dam to Precious. Uh, not Precious Moments. What was his name? <sighs> when Precious they, Moments I, bred her, probably. Right, right yeah. yeah. He crossed onto her, and then eventually one of her, one of, the, of that cross ended up, I believe, with the Damons. And I think they still have 
crosses to that in right. their program. Yeah, they do, for sure. Number nine here, I let in for a friend of uh, Jackie Nemmers, and they had two foals, and they gave me the one they thought was the weakest, and I placed ninth. <laughs> and then when we went to the sale, they asked me if I, they let in this one. If to you want if you want to hear a story about the weakest, I can tell you about our 89 winner. <laughs> Your 89 winner, yeah. We had two colts. Okay. A few spot by the innkeeper, and we had the colts that won. And I chose to lead in the select sire the colt by the innkeeper. He was a few spot colt, and he was really big bodied. He didn't get a, a bite <laughs> by any joke. And Katie. The, what they did back then was the classes were, I don't know, there were 30, I want to say 30, 35 in there. They split, they pulled us out and separated us. You know, the judges picked their wins and then they brought them back in and they picked. Well, when Katie, the Colt Katie was leading, which was the Colt that eventually won, uh, we went over there because Katie was only like 14 at the time. Right. And we went in and switched numbers and I took the Colt in and we ultimately he won. But Katie's the one that got him to the position that he would win. I picked the wrong colt. Right. I picked the colt I thought would win. She got the, the second, what we thought was our second string colt. And, and, and that's the colt won. that won. Yeah, you never know sometimes. Yeah. That's a good no. story. Yeah, Katie has never forgiven me for snatching the lead out of her hand <laughs> on that colt. I said, I'm going back in with this colt. Well, you let in her mare this year, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, RD's fancy gold feather, the grand dam yes, of 50 shades. Of, yeah, and I that's knew that I mare. didn't say that, but I, I still remember. I showed a picture of her on this show many times where she has her head down. She was over height at the sale, remember, as a baby? Because mm -hmm. Corey Damon, Damon says probably one of the best over height purchases ever at the sale. I think she yeah. was 47. Yeah. She wasn't way over, but her cross to rough and tough has just been a golden cross, and now she's the grand dam of. Fifty Shades Darker, they're young stallion. They're silver I didn't kids. Realize so. She was in his pedigree. That's where the Palomino comes from. Yeah, that's yeah. She's smoky black. Yep. Right, that's where it's coming from. So here's the thirty five entries in the Philly class that year, ninety five. Again, Erdman's won that with their Rusty Bars Philly. And uh, that mare was a Mr. Sunny Money bred mare. I think she was an own granddaughter, Miss Money Investor. Then Gene had a skipping choice. Philly there. He was a Wheeze Camp uh, branded stallion, Skip and Choice. Uh, look at who was third there. HMH Super Sox. Has anybody ever heard of her? She was oh, third God in the no. <laughs> Probably one of the winningest ponies at Congress. Yeah. Well, Jeremy actually went and looked. I don't. I didn't get his permission to say this, but I'm sure he won't mind. But he did me a favor and went and looked up all her wins, and he come up with 40-some wins. That would make her the winningest mare. Uh, of all time because a lot of people told me she was probably the winningest POA and uh, at the national show. Uh, Shoto has 54, Tudor Bars has 59, and the Crisco Kid has 60. And I even started saying, well, she might have more than 60 because I can tell how many Hank has. she won more high points. Well, she's won a lot of high points, yeah. And that's just like Crisco. I went back one time and looked. He took second 33 times. <laughs> So that's a lot of seconds. Yeah. But anyway, yep, there she is as a baby Hank Frieder. That was a bright eyes brother bred at mare, small at mare. He might have hard shipped her. They don't have the APHC behind it, but she did good for him a lot. Of, and eventually, one of her full sit brothers won the Fitcher, do you remember? A couple years later. But then JBJ's. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yep, yeah, we'll see that here probably. JBJ's step aside, boys. It was a good. I conditioned that one for Jackie. They hauled it to Tulsa. And she, someone was lunging her, and she got away and hurt a leg. But they still showed her in the slick sire and took fourth. But she got a little yeah. pot belly because they had to haul her back to Iowa, you know. And but she was uh, JBJ's designed by dude was a Doc Stuff dude daughter, really nice uh, filly. Avatar's little Mo Kate. I bet if she's still alive, I think she's still at Marlene's. Marlene kept her, I think, as a broodmare. Marlene keeps. A lot of right, of course, S.S. Katie was the mother to two grand champion stallions both and years. where did S.S. Katie come from? Spud Snyder. Spud yeah. Snyder. Who had some of the Phillies Montana. early. Montana. Yeah, Montana, that's right. So and that's uh, where I come from. That's where I you come from. I have a little background there. I have a little background there, yeah. yeah. I have my a little mom, background in the Northeast, but yeah. My mom and dad were born in Roundup, Montana, so 
They were, yeah, they were both uh, dead. Bud, Bud was a great person. He, yeah, he raised he was, up there with yeah. Larry Gibson and um, she, the guy, uh, Leon. Yeah, Leon Chastain. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, those two, those three are just, in my book, great people. They were great people, and I miss them. Dearly. Yeah, well, they're all gone now. But Spud, yeah, his sons, he had a couple sons were state champions in wrestling, I believe, and stuff like that. Uh, you have a Kinchlow there, Eminem's our bit of class. Uh, May's legacy was Salmon's. Uh, he had a lot of good horse mares in the Appaloosa stallion he used. Too. That's not it there. He had Doc's Tough Rascal for a while. There's Santee Skip Nova. Of course, she'd end up being a full sister to Noches, uh, Santee mm -hmm. Noches. So that was 95. So there's your two Futurity winners. You're starting to get a little more modern look. Even though Russ T. Bars was short, you know, he was a 50 and under. Uh, but these are I his two. I didn't realize he was that small. Yep, he was a small stallion. Yeah, or 51 and under anyway, for sure. But, yeah, Erdman's, they did well in the Futurity. You have quite a few families, you can see, where they come to do business, you know. Later, the Pattersons, and, of course, uh, the Spencers are still doing it, and the uh, Bagwells, you know. Don't and, forget the Burtons. They, uh, the Burtons, yeah. I don't like to see Pat walk in the ring because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Pat was getting picked to hire, you know, we're going to show suddenly Sid and some that – you know, he has, he has to turn people down some years, you know, because he'll have 10 people ask him to show. And uh, he'll just pick the one he thinks has the best chance to win, of course. You know, unless but he's yeah, shown one of them. More recently, I think they've been showing either theirs or the... Center. Well, right. Cause, and guess what? They're winning with theirs, too. So Mercy Me won. And that's from uh, Janelle's breeding program. So, so there's the two... The Philly, of course, is on the right, and the Colts on the left, and his full brother had won the year before. So by Miss Gold Dust, Gold Chip's full sister. Mm -hmm. And here's the trivia question, but I just talked about her, so I was going to say, well, she's super nice. She's got socks, and uh, Hank's holding her. See, Hank and Mary <laughs> Helen, so HMH super socks. I get, there's all the clues, but... There's your winningest mayor in POA history at the international show and Congress. And I think she's still the same color. Yeah, she didn't roan out much at all. And they bred her one time to Kiddo Tough. We shipped semen, and the Caribbean kid is still doing well. He's won, and he actually had a yep. colt that won before they gilded him. But So I'm proud of that. They only bred her one time, and out come a, a good POA. But, yep, she's a great mayor. And he was... Again, he was knocking on the door many times. I think he was second. He was third. Of course, he helped run the sale and stuff in, in Tulsa. You know, Hank did. And uh, yeah. he was a big part of POAs. He's a good person, too. Yeah, he went to... Another good, good, good person. To gone too to. soon, for sure. Uh, Hank. You know, uh, Jan Jones has been in our store, my wife's store here in Enid, uh, the bakery and bistro, many times. And she'll go live, or, or, or uh, not live, but she'll... Uh, put on Mary Helen live and showing her stuff. And Mary's like, get me some of those. Get me some of those. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> so she's picking out treats because uh, she don't live that close to here, you know, what she's in Oklahoma. But uh, So there's Jackie and uh, JBJ's Step Aside Boys, the kiddo daughter that I was talking about. That's her. And uh, she won the international show uh, that year. Larry Gibson let her in. I let in the Colt for Jackie and won it, and Larry let in the Philly and won it at the show. But then at the Futurity, uh, she placed whatever I showed there, fourth or fifth or sixth, something like that. So here's probably one of the prettiest winners once they grew up of all time. I mean, this picture here should be, I use it for ads all the time. You know, and this is J.O.F. Skip oh, yeah. Scotch. Yeah, so she the won in still have her. Yep, they still have her. And last year's Flex Sire Futurity winner chewed her tail off. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah. and that was Just bred by you. In there. Yeah, you yeah, got inside was. information there. Yeah, I got inside information. Yeah. So anyway, I don't have a picture of her as a baby, but there she is, as an adult and a great mare there. So here's unfortunately an... never been able to have a foal. Right. They tried. Right. And they well, finally gave up. But... Yeah, that's probably meant to be, but. So here's another list. So Pal Malibu oh, won. One. This didn't... one I can read. 06. This was 06. So this is the year suddenly Sid won the Colts and Pal Malibu won the 
Phillies, uh, well, Pat let them both in. Let's talk about Pal- Pal Malibu for a moment. Go ahead. Um, Karen Carr bought this filly. I think she was five or six weeks old. Karen Carr is from Florida. And she bought that filly when she was five or six weeks old. And off she goes to the futurity and wins. <laughs> it was pretty exciting for Karen at right. the time. And they still own the mare. Oh, that's She's cool. She's had a couple of foals for her. And uh, but anyway, yeah. That's my pal Malibu story. <laughs> okay. So this year you start seeing Spencer's get on the list. You know, they might have had before that, but in eighth place, Customize. I like Spencer's names because uh, they do short names, you know, or one. Oh, they do, they like, do the most unique names. Yeah, like Stilettos. Like, and, yeah. Where do you come up with these names? Yeah, and I always like those short names. So, And then... Uh, Yep, St. Jana ended up uh, being a good broodmare, I think. LVO respects Senorita. Uh, she's one she's of my favorite. Brood. Yeah, well, I she's, think she's been a good broodmare. She has. She, uh, you know, Aaron showed her when she was young, Erin uh, Brown from Texas, and uh, she did well. I always loved that mare on the rail and in lunge line, and she never did win as much as I thought she should have. Her full brother was not nearly the POA she was, and he went grand. You know, four on the floor. No, he was not. Yeah, she's she's a great mare. She's in Wisconsin now. Uh, LVO respects Senorita. So, uh, but anyway, there you had the cool bun names too. Bun deniable, and then in tenth was bun resistible. So my favorite bun name was Buns Bonita because my favorite band is Van Halen. So you know, Bomb Bonita, Bomb. But I think that's where they got no, that from. I, 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 sorry, I'm out. You're, this is not my band. You're out? Well, yeah, you like um, who, Waylon Jennings or somebody. Or, I don't know. No, Anne I Murray. like Luke I, I'm a little more modern. Than you're that, modern? Yeah. You probably got the Eagles' greatest hits. Come on, Tracy. But anyway, so there's a cool list from uh, 06. We're moving on now a little bit. So, and there she is. There is Pal Malibu. Of course, from the Pal program. And there's your colt list and you could kind of see the the breeding changing there's quite a few on this list that went on to be stallions mr skip a star stood for a while maybe still as lvo respects poco Bean is still a good sire going and he's had a lot of good uh, oh, yeah. winners no, he, actually i think he is probably my favorite lv pony other than there was a filly that won the future the respectable image pony right. was my favorite right but i but as far as longevity, the Poco Bean pony has right. done. Well, he was there apparent to Mr. Respect. When they lost Mr. Respect yeah. at a fairly young age, they were lucky to have a few spot Because he's a few spot, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And they yeah. were lucky to have him. So Cliff and Joan uh, are great breeders of POAs. And, and the LVOs have made a, a yeah. great name for themselves. The fourth place pony has done well. Yep, CR move on it. And, of course, they bred an impulse bred mare to Rough and Tough. And the Fishers, again, a family. They're in the Hall of Fame now, Millard is, but that's been doing it for a long time. They had uh, Smokey Blackburn way back in the, you know, the early 80s. Yeah. A daughter yeah. of his became the mother to Pal Chippenpot, you know. And then, uh, yeah, so. And Santee they- Marshall, he's on the cover I don't think that's. I don't think he spelled it that way. I think that's a misprint, but I don't think it was Marshall like that. I can't. I can't see. Okay. Oh yeah, second place. Yes, I yeah, can see. Yeah, second it. place. Yep. But he's the one that was on the cover of the German POA book that B.J. Spar uh, had wrote the original. So. Yep. And then you have a couple MMs there. That was something to come there. Maple Medals so ended up. Double twist. I think went on to be sire okay yeah so that was a pretty cool list there in 06 and look at the number competing 37 that's that's tough and there's suddenly sid with uh the class yearbook there a bunch of people standing in the picture of course there's pat showing him and then his owners uh lowell roseland and orlin stoley they own the sire so i think suddenly sid was just owned by orlin but uh and he's done well as a sire, suddenly said. Oh, yes, he has. Yeah. Yes, there's doubt that he has made his mark. Yeah. Here's a KS's mare, and this is when she went grand champion. But, you know, a few have done this, and uh, she was one of them. She won in 07, 
And, uh, I remember this wind, yeah. and we felt at the time that it was kind of the twilight of the steel years. Right. And when they won the, with this Philly, it was just like we, we all from the south that were there were just, we came up to them, and we were so excited for them to win and win in the way that they had. Because, right. I mean, they'd won four, but it was in, I think, back in 87 when the classes were split. Right. Well, so they won in 84, and then they won in 87, yeah. The, and uh, yeah, but but they the hadn't won they, in a long time, yeah. Yeah. And so it was kind of their, and it was their twilight years, I felt like, right. at the time with one. And it was just amazing. We had so much fun with that win. Right. Well, there they just said our first select sire entry was in 1998, Solitaire. There's another cool name. So that's probably Rosalind. It just says Facebook user on my end, but she was fourth or fifth. I remember Solitaire, too. And, I do, too. Uh, yeah. So that's another one of those cool names. So, okay, here's Etched in Elegance. Uh, she broke the record, you know, but she was second as a baby. And... Then she broke the sale record, but that's Tracy, or not Tracy, uh, what's her name? Darren, Darren Vincent holding her there. There's a good picture of Doug Sorrell. He auctioned her, because that was a record yep, right photo. Behind her. Yeah, etched in elegance. She was second that year. Here's Jackie with the JBJ's KG lady that Kennedy's ended up showing in JPFC. And I don't, they, I don't think they ever bred her to Cody. I think they sold her. You know, their program had a lot of kiddo breeding. They sold her as a two-year-old. I think so. Thing. Yeah. I don't know if her and Cody would have threw color. They might have, but she was a nice filly. Of course, her mother was, you know, the Latches Shady Lady, that great mare. So, yep. But uh, and then there's, uh, there's Hank Frieder again. The year he showed... Uh, or let's see, this was 95. Yeah, that was Super Sox's year. This was a baby. Betty McLaren had him get ready, and he took sixth in the Futurity that year. So, yep. Solitaire was the grand dam of Sweet Cadence, Slick Sire, Futur Slick Sire winner and reserve champion. Yep. RSB, so that's, uh, yep, Rosalind is saying that. And Solitaire, or uh, Sweet Cadence is on the list. I believe she was the 2010 winner. Yep, she was. Stilettos was in an 09, and Sweet Cadence was in uh, The next 10. year. Yep, the next yeah. year. Let's see here. Okay, here, we are. I was going to say we went all the way from Billy Bright to Billy McHugh because Billy Bright <laughs> placed early on, and then here's Billy McHugh, and here's some uh, well-known people in this picture. You got, starting from the left, Larry, a young Larry Myers, then Doug Sorrell's head and hat there, and then... Wayne Latch was a co-owner on this, I believe. And then uh, that's a young Diana Peaton, or Diane Peaton mm -hmm. there. And then, of course, that's Jerry King, who must have read the pedigree. He was the pedigree reader, and he was the president of the club for a long time. And Diane was a president. So that's a cool picture there. And Billy McHugh, he was actually the person that put this ad in the magazine was Bud Campbell, because Bud had bred Larry's mare, to his stay in Driftwood's Mr. Music. And then he sold Mr. Music and he was advertising, you know, that somebody bought Mr. Music and here's a colt buying. So, you still with me, Tracy? Yep, I'm still here. <laughs> I didn't put I'm you to sleep, did I? That's I'm fine. I'm trying to hook the two Billies together because I know Diana had the, the other Billy that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, so her in this picture was just, I'm like, she had that one too. I don't know if she did. I'm just saying we went from Billy Bright to Billy McHugh. She had Billy Bright for a time. Okay. Well, she definitely had Billy McHugh. She bought him at the sale. So she's got a thing for Billy. Yep. She likes Billy. So go ahead and name one TC Billy Weedo, and uh, you'll have a buyer. They got a Weedo now. I they know. got a Weedo now. Yeah. They won the, <laughs> the National Congress this year with it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So here you go. I, uh, this was one of the early pal ponies that uh, by Cody. Cody's first foals, they say here, and this is Palisade, and she did well at a sale, uh, but she took uh, eighth in the select sire for charity. So I'm just She's you know probably one of my favorite pal ponies. Yeah, she and she was early on too, 
Yeah, early on. Yeah. So it's, it's the one that comes to mind when somebody says something about Pal. the Kennedys. I always yeah. think of her. And I like that name, Palisade, too. Uh, so MM, big league asset. This was an 11 filly here from the Pattersons, and this was a thing to come. You know, the la- later they uh, dominated the Futurity two years in a row, but here uh, and they had uh, Eugene and Irene Zimmerman uh, show this filly, probably get her ready. And I think that's Susan Wells there on the left from Kansas. Uh, she purchased this filly from the Pattersons. So. Okay, then. All right. We're going to talk about that. Well, we're talking about that year, though. Um, I'm trying to find it on my list. What year was this? I got the list up on the screen now, too. That was 11. Hang on, I got it. Yeah. Well, I can't see that screen. Uh, that's fine. Too legit. Going back. Too legit. Again, let's go to- yeah. Let's go to Karen Carr. I do believe she bought this pony before the Futurity when they were out there for the. We were just out there. Okay. She bought that the two legit pony before the Futurity. Okay. And he won the Futurity. So if you want to buy a pony that's won the Futurity, you probably need to talk to Karen Carr because <laughs> she she's buys gonna, them all before the twice. Futurity and right. they win. Well, Rosalind probably can comment on that because they're the breeders of Too Legit, and that's another good name, you know, short and sweet name. Um, yeah. Yep. And I don't think they have them anymore, but, well I, well, I know they don't have them anymore, but they bought him. And, had him and she's the one that before. bought Pell Malibu before the Futurity? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. And she ended up winning a, a two different, yeah. From two good programs. Two different too. breeders, and they just, she just, they have an eye. Right. So if you want to buy a winner, talk to Karen Carr. Talk to Karen Carr, yeah. So uh, as long as we're talking about Spencer's, too, their stallion has been doing really good. You know, the uh, Zips All the Rage. Uh, that's his name, isn't it? And Because uh, she's uh, all the rage and respect the rage. And then, of course, Outrageous Cajun. And, uh, you know, he's just done a good which, job while for we're him. talking about. Outrageous, outrageous Cajun comp. You said earlier you thought that Ross bred him. No, no. Um, actually, it was um, Jan, uh, Jan, Ro- Jan Nolan. Yeah. That's what I said. Yep. I, I meant I don't think they bred him. I said I think I didn't go on to say Jan, but I thought Jan because he's out of Jan a. Jan did breed Outrageous Cajun. Yeah, because he's out of one of her mares. Yeah. But they have him as a stallion now. Spencer's do. Yeah. He is a, a very unique individual yeah. i i kind of lb all the rage is the sire to those guys so it's outrageous yeah. Cajun. and yeah. lb all the rage is is doing well i mean he sired some congress winners this year and maturity winners the maturities the state maturities this right. year right and you know yeah so and there we are towards the end of the list tc weeds and roses and 18 and tc touched by a widow in 20. So, and of course, you had well, the Colt in 80, 89. What happened in the 90s and the 2000s? Were you watching NASCAR too much or what What happened? No, <laughs> those were the years that my stepfather was sick. Okay. And I was single and just, I had a, a mare. I bought a right. mare from Doc Nemmer that was a full sister to Doc, actually, the 97 winner, Doc Stonks of Mess. And I was just kind of fumbling around here at home and doing some stuff locally, not doing a whole lot nationally because family issues. And then I got married, obviously, in 2003, and we were standing speaker of the house. We were showing the security. Quite frankly, fitting was an issue for me, I think, because I really think my speaker babies were just as good as my TC Impulsive Weedle babies. But we hit up on a niche a few years back, and figured out how to fit them and what we needed to do and it takes a lot of work and we and i had a, a hell of a mayor that right. i said jack let me purchase it, days old i didn't even know i bought her until she <laughs> messaged me and said what do you want to name her here's your choices That's cool. and that was jbj's a touch lucky right. the name i chose of the choices that she gave me and she was a weanling she was um i think six in the maturity herself Right. And um, she was bought to cross on TC Impulsive Guido and Abby Smith, now or Abby Kriegel, now Smith, was just big in helping 
fit these babies and right the rest is pretty much history i mean you know it's it's fitting it's right. really fitting i think well um, speaker we've been very go ahead Go ahead and say what you're going to say Well, about Speaker, Speaker was a halter. You know, he's a halter horse to me, and he yeah, he and, was a halter sire too. Right, and Jake's performance bred all the way, but, you know, his babies are a little prettier. Uh, and then, like you say, you're getting yeah. a handle on conditioning a little more, so. And we're working our butts off. You're right. Every single night, every single day, you know, the last five to six weeks, like I tell Abby, it's six weeks out of your life we have to do, you know, that we do this. Right. And. And we've been busting butt. She's got her own foal this year going. It's no nothing out of my breeding program, but he's he's pretty fancy. But is that that Wheeling leopard colt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty fancy. But um, the weeds and roses and the touch by a widow, they're out of the same mare. Right. And she actually goes back to a mare that I owned that was a Congress champion that was by tardy impressive. Yeah. And. We were fortunate enough when Jackie owned a daughter of hers. I'm like, I want some of that back in my program. And <laughs> yeah. I said, originally, I owned Speaker. So, and Speaker was my stallion. And I said, if that mare has a solid colt, solid filly, I want first options. And uh, things change. Right. Genetic testing or whatever. Right. So our program changed tremendously that year, and this few spot filly, and she says, "Well, it's not solid, but it's few spot." And I said, "I want her. She's in part with her." <laughs> right. And she's like, uh, "I wouldn't sell her to anybody but you." This is she's. I don't even think she was days old. Like she may have been the, the hours day old. after. <laughs> yeah, hours. And I'm like, I want that filly, and she said, "Only to you will I sell her." And so the rest is history. Um, both cool. are tremendous fillies. Right. Unfortunately, Weeds and Roses was purchased at a very young age, as most of mine seem to be lately. Right. Um, and the owner that bought her was unable to whatever to promote her. Okay. So I kinda, I've not lost track completely of her, but she's in more of a ranch program right now. Okay. The Touched by a Weedle filly. Um, Lindsay Peaton and I had made a deal the year before. <laughs> so when she was born, I'm, I'm like, Lindsay, here's the picture. Do you want this filly? And she's like, absolutely. And so that's how she ended up with Lindsay. And Lindsay's done a fabulous job. Oh, of absolutely. Her. That's a good person to make you know? a deal with. Yeah, she's. Well, yeah, she actually was attracted to the filly that was born in 2019 that I had at the security that was uh, second and third under two judges and got dumped. Oof. by the third ended up seventh overall but okay. Lindsay, I, she was already sold and i said Lindsay, if you want one just like this it's yours when it's born and there we go and Amen. she's made her a multiple congress champion a congress high point champion and it's just been a great 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 ride do you have a full sibling this year uh this year um her foal was by um him a stallion and unfortunately we lost him okay so she's bred back for next year or 2022 back to jake okay and uh, so we'll see what we get next year All right and then out of this cross we can't even we can't forget tc lucky widow which was the first one and he's got his rom and halter lunge line in, in hand trail and the plan is he's entered he's his owner is a non-pro so okay. he'll do it Paternity in non-pro. That's cool. But That's cool. Um, I don't know if you're reading the comments, but uh, Rosalind said I just cleaned outrageous cage install. So she wrote that on here about five minutes ago. She wrote that, but you know what outrageous Cajun said? That's what he said. So. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Yeah. Um, but we've been very lucky the last couple of years. I mean, it's luck. It's, it's in my opinion, it's luck. Well, when you're talking things. about first to second, it is a lot of luck, especially now there's, you know, I'm not downgrading it or anything because it's still a lot of tough competition. But for years, there was 40 or 50 in the class, you know, but even 28, 30 in the class or even if there's 15 in the class, it's some of the best in the country, you know. So if you yeah. can come out in the top three, you know, you worked at it, you know, you did. So it's a little more than luck, but winning sometimes like is, yeah, is luck. Can I tell us? 
story. Tell a story. Go ahead. All right. Our, our 2018 winner, um, TC Weeds and Roses, um, I chose because I've had, I have, everybody knows I've struggled with my knees, which I'm going to show my own this year, but um, I chose to let Abby Smith show um, Weeds and Roses, and she's never been in that kind of competition before. And um, she was a nervous wreck. And I'm looking around, and that was one of the smallest, like, secretary classes, to be quite honest. And um, Pat Burton came up to her. He didn't know her from Adam, but he told her, he told her before the class, she stand out there with a filly, and he says, you go there and show it like you own it. He said, because you've got the best filly in the barn. That means a lot, yeah. That's a good yep. compliment. Yeah. Yeah, and she went out there, he said, you just go out there and you show her. And she did, and I, I believe they won under all three judges that year. Okay. I know last year's Philly won under all three judges, and then she won the Breeders' Challenge. That the Weeds and Roses won the Breeders' Challenge as well, but I know the Breeders' Challenge wasn't unanimous. But the thing of it is, is I, I'm going to give a shout out to Pat Burton because to take, she was a rookie. He didn't know her from right. Adam. I mean, maybe he knew I owned the Philly. Maybe he didn't. I don't know, but he went up there when I wasn't even there because she came up and she was like, that Pat guy talked to me. And I was like, well, what do you say? <laughs> that guy told talked me. to me. <laughs> you know, it's just, he said, I, I have to go in there like I own it because I got the best filly in the barn. And I said, well, maybe you do. I said, I haven't looked, but if he says you do, you probably do. Yeah. You know? Well, I've seen and Pat do things that. like that, and I've seen him walk up to somebody that he didn't know, usually kids and fix their halter or and they were showing against him you know and they not yeah. they weren't always kids some were adults and some of them he didn't know he wasn't that? doing it for money or for anything he didn't say you know i'm pat burton i'm helping you he just reached up and switched something around and then wished him luck and went out and showed against them you know so that's I'm cool pretty sure he had a filly in that class but, right oh i'm know. sure he led something in yeah so you know and yeah. so but yeah shout out to pat burton he's oh, that's a good cool. guy <laughs> Yeah, I like Pat. So I was going to have him as a guest, but they were busy a couple of weeks ago, but they were always too busy too. So that's why we're not going to do an episode here for a while because I know it's going to be hard on people, you know, next week traveling. Are you traveling Tuesday? Oh, uh, no, we leave Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay. We're going to go to David Brewers in Tennessee on Sunday. Okay. And then lay over there Monday and then leave like, I think we were talking tonight about two in the morning to get there right at check-in at noon. Okay. Because I'm a believer in giving everybody a day of Oh, rest. of course, when you're traveling that far. When you're at David yeah. Brewer's, have him show you the Nickadack, Nickajack Dam. Maybe you've seen it before, but that's how I named the POA Nickajack. Uh, was, well, Nickajack is there. Yeah, well, he was there. They sold him now, I think. But it's ironic that he ended up there, and he said, I'm, I live right next to the Nickajack Bridge or whatever. No, I, the know where the Nick, I know actually know where that is, actually. I we figured passed you, it going up the mountain. I figured but, you um, did. My dad was in a, a bad accident on that mountain on Nickajack uh, Dam Road there, whatever, hauling horses. And uh, he was fine, but it totaled out our truck. And I had a colt born that day or that week, and I named him. Nicky Jack, because Bounce Back Jack was his grandpa anyway. So, and Ricochet was his mother. Ricochet back to Bounce. So I said Rick and Nick and Jack and Dad was just in an accident. And Nick, so that's where Nick and Jack, uh, champion from Morris's corridor stay, and that's where he his name came from. So. And yeah. we can we talk about do we have oh, do we have to cut off right this second? No, we're at two hours have another and story. three minutes. Give me I another. Hit me with some knowledge. Story about well it's not knowledge it's just about <laughs> um friendship with okay. the breed um okay. i met somebody at the futurity in i think it was 1985 were we in indianapolis then yep i believe sure. we were okay i'm sitting in the stands watching the sale because i was there to, to receive my supreme champion award for i was there from washington state and i flew in and I was sitting in the stands watching the sale. I was, uh, I don't know, 17, 18, 19, 18 or 19 years old. And I'm watching the sale, and this pretty filly comes through the pen um, that was from John Stolfus. And uh, 
real pretty filly. Her name was Miss Muffet. Mm-hmm. And I watched the bidding and lady, I think it was $1,300 she paid for the filly. And I turned around and I said to her, <laughs> that was a really nice buy. That person was Charlene Aston. And you've been from friends Georgia. ever since. I'm from Washington. I'm from Washington State. From Georgia. Right. She is like now one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Right. And she's never won the select tire security. She's had a lot of top contenders in the last 10 or 12 years. Right. And last year she was una- unable to attend the security, but her daughter brought their only foal. And that was state of the heart. And he won the select sire futurity. And um, it was really special because I won it. Right. And she won it, even though she wasn't there. And um, it was just it was just a really special futurity for me and Elisa and for Charlene, even though she was at Potentia. Right. For me to win and her to win at the same time. It was just really That's cool. Right. And our friendship has spanned over 30, over 30 years now. Next year will be, I think, 35, 40 years. 40 years next year, maybe. Mm. But anyway, right. it's, just a, it's just a cool story because yeah. we always use that as our stopping point <laughs> when we were going to Iowa, when we were going to Illinois. Right. Going to Tulsa this year, I stopped there. And I will stop there on my way back from Illinois this year. Okay. But, uh, but yeah. I wondered when Shut you up. said you were stopping at Brewers, I thought, because you normally stop at Aston's. Um, I do. And then last year, because of COVID, we stopped at Brewers, and it was just a little bit easier haul for the ponies on the second day. Okay. And the humans, yeah. too. Right. So we're going we're gonna to go to the Brewers this year. Plus, they couldn't accommodate the number of ponies we have in our trailer. Okay. So, but coming back, I don't have... But, you better not have as many, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I always have to stop because Mike's cooking is amazing. <laughs> so. Well, Aston's have right. had a lot of great POAs over the years. Of course, they're the breeder of Speaker of the House, too. So. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, you know, and they have they've bred a lot of Supreme Champions for a very small program. They've done a right. great job. Well, when we did the yep. international list, you know, and the national Congress list, they're right up there for a two mare. She says they had a two mare program, you know, basically. So, they're they're very yep. picky about what they breed, and and they've bred a lot of great ones. So, well, that was another and good they got story. One next year. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's good. They bred um the mare that Heather rides. Uh, can't remember her name though. Um, she came out of Oregon, and she's a speed Indies? mare primarily. An indie mare? Huh? Is it indie something? No, it's not an indie mare. Oh, okay, because no. that's Oregon or Washington, yeah. No, okay. um, what is it? I can't think of her name. But anyway, they've bred her to David Brewer's stallion for next okay. year, so they they're still in the game. They're still going, yeah. Game. Right. No, uh, and so. Anyway, I just wanted to. That's say a good that story, it was really Tracy. Special I'm, I'm glad you got that in there. And I, yeah, that's I know all of us watching tonight and stuff. They we all have lifelong friends that came from POAs. You know, that's what's special. I guess you could in any group, but it just seems like POAs is really special that way. You know, you make friends. I know, I know people that, you know, I, I may never own another POA, but I'll have certain friends forever. You know, from POAs that I still talk to. So, I mean, we talk about more than just POA stuff, you know, so that's, that's cool. So, you got any more cool stories, Tracy? I imagine um, you do. We need a story, a Tracy story. I have a lot of stories, but I don't think they're, <laughs> I don't, Not other fit. than, you know, getting, getting hammered by the third judge at the Flex Sire Security <laughs> couple times, or yeah. a judge that places you twice and then takes you off the card completely. That happened to me one year. They. Yeah. Said I won. I don't remember what year that was. But remember, they said I won. Doc's and I knew t- I didn't win. Right. Because I knew. And then it comes out the judge placed me on two cards. And then oh. when you go back and ask the judge, and then he goes, Oh, I didn't place that horse at all. But he put me on the card twice. Oh. But then he took me off the card completely, which knocked us all the way to seven. And you know, if he put you on there twice, he wanted you on there. So that was ridiculous. Yeah. But. Yeah, but that's just the three guard, the three judge system. It just it, you get hammered like we did last year, because in Charlene's class, her colt won under all three judges. I was second under two. Right. The first two, and I was like, "Oh my God, this is going to be so cool! We're going to go first and second. Right. 
and the third judge nothing dumped it yeah so we ended up fifth overall but wow. you know that's how the game goes oh and, it goes that way yeah but i just i would like to recognize all the work that everybody does in going to the flex fire fraternity i know i've been in the barn till eight o'clock nine o'clock at night for weeks now five weeks right i yeah. work hard yeah, you work hard to do. Well, I got a little story kind of about the futurity and about POAs in general and how trying to get credit for the ponies. You know, we, we'd go to sales to buy hay and stuff, and we always tried to buy the best alfalfa we could. And this one weekend, this guy was there, and he said, told my dad, he goes, Pat, why you and your son always buy that high-priced alfalfa? We have quarter horses, and you guys just have ponies. And my dad goes, this is probably in the late 90s, early 2000s. He goes, because in two weeks from now, Kent's going to be in Des Moines showing against 50-some Colts. He said, mm -hmm. where are you guys going to go on a trail ride? And we actually followed them to their house. And dad just looked at all their horses and, you know, well, that one's this and that one's this, you know. And, we, and then they followed us home. And they seen our broodmares and they kept saying, well, that's a quarter horse, right? And we'd go, no, that's a POA. Because a lot of them were solid because we had, I think we had kiddo already. If not, we were breeding, you know, diffuse spots and stuff. Yeah. And over and over they'd kept saying, because, I mean, they would rival the mares they had as quarter horse mares, you know, and ours were all POAs. And uh, they kind of got it then that, okay, they gave credit to these these ponies, you know. They couldn't figure out why we were buying the high price hay. We shouldn't be bidding against them. Uh, well, but, let me tell you what. What's high price alfalfa to you? I pay forty dollars a bale to feed these babies, <laughs> and I go through a bale every six days. Yeah, well, it's not my fault you live in Florida. So. <laughs> no, but what I'm going to say is, uh, we're 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 sinking some money into the oh, deal. Oh, absolutely. We're yeah. not going to get back. Right. But alfalfa is no, they got to have the alfalfa. You could win the futurity every year, and you're not going to get the money back. But that you're not doing no. it for money. You're doing it for no. the love of it. Uh, but it yep. is cool when you win. And the checks used to be, you know, a little nicer, like we've seen tonight, 2700 well, for first one. Well, they only till four. Right. Now they split it around, and then and the numbers have dropped. They have. Dropped. And when it was in Tulsa, there was some added money in Tulsa mm -hmm. for a while. But, you know, there was also other things with it maybe not as good, too. So, you know, but it's interesting to see, to watch it over the years and stuff, so. Well, well, I know what the numbers are this year, and they're not great, but they're not terrible either. When I heard you talking about 15 and 17 horse classes, that's about where we're going to be this year. Is but yeah. I encourage anybody that's out there listening, if you're having a POA foal, anybody can win. Because as we've seen, yeah, there's some repeat winners, but there's also some in there, if you look, that they're – they were not repeat. You know, they right. went out there and busted their tail and right. and and got it done. Right. For sure. You know, it's it's a great it's a great program. It's great to promote your babies. For me, it's just a way, to, mostly, to drop off my babies that are sold. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. If they're going, they're going in the futurity. We're fitting them. You right. Know? You're gonna fit them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so that if we're going up there anyway, we might as well show them the security. But, you know, now the sale may or may not come back. But it's a good place to drop off horses, move horses, right. move home. It's always been a place for me to buy my broodmares. And I don't think I've ever bought anything that I haven't received somewhere that way. Well, I've received one I think I had shipped. But the rest of them, I always got them in Iowa or at, you know in at where Wherever Illinois the sale or wherever sure we were was. going yeah right. you know it's a right. good way to move ponies in an inexpensive way because there's tons of us that have spots open right right but, for sure you know but I think the select sire security is still a, a viable thing and oh, I it think is. it's a cool spectator yeah. sport too I mean uh, the versatility at the national show is a cool thing to watch uh, but the the baby futurity has always been in the stands in Des Moines were always full right around there, you know, around that corner. Even when I didn't have anything there, I had to watch. Oh, Marked yeah. out every placing and, yeah. and all of that, you know. I stopped and, by in 2017. My niece was getting married, and right before, a couple months before, they changed the date. And I looked on the calendar, 
because I said, wait a minute, that's about the time. I hadn't been to a futurity since 2009. And I said, that's about the time of the sale. And I looked, and sure enough, it was the, the date. So, and she, of course, she was getting married on a Saturday. So we left Perfect. Oklahoma, yep, on Wednesday, not even early, drove to Des Moines, took my wife to the Big Steer, because I'd been telling her about oh, it for yeah. a few years. No, that's the most amazing <laughs> right. place. It burnt down, but it's, re- it's rebuilt. It's rebuilt. So we dropped 100 bucks there. We stayed at a hotel that I'd stayed in for years and years, you know, near there in Altoona. And then we got up the next morning and uh, went to the show and uh, watched the Futurity. I didn't stay for the sale, but I, I stayed. we stayed and watched the Futurity, and I really enjoyed it. You know, got to see people, and that's that's the last one I've been to, but that was the first one since I've been out, basically. Well, and uh, need to try to get to Illinois. Well, I'm not going this year, but uh, I, I know, just but can't you go. need to try to get to it. I'll try to get to it. It's an amazing facility. Well, I've been there to that facility, of course, you know. Yeah. So, but and I, that is I, a cool. I was already telling Monica about, is the restaurant still there? The saloon-type restaurant? Is it still on the ground? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's Cause still it, there. Yeah. We have never ventured off the ground other right. than to go to Walmart when the last <laughs> what, three years. Um, we don't go out. We don't go anywhere. We right. go to Walmart if we have to. And as far as eating, we go one night. We make out to go to the restaurant on the ground. Um, you know, the rest of the time we have uh, the trailer, right. obviously, because. I lived off that restaurant when I went with Jackie one year because I didn't have a car, so I just would, you know, walk over there and eat on my own. And then one night we went out to eat at Pizza Hut and talk about this. It was, of course, Jackie and I, and then Gene Carr, Ruth Picoy, and Paul Shanks from Michigan. That was the group. I never fall fondly again. That's another yeah, person. That's another person, yeah. Paul and I shared rooms right before I got on the board, board of directors. Uh, we shared shared a room out in Reno before because he was on the board, and I was about ready to go on the board. You know, the writing was kind of on yeah. the wall that I was going to run. And, uh, yeah, he. I always liked talking to Paul, and he was a, a genuine good well, guy. Well, again, let me just go another POA program. He's the person that got the incentive program where if you have a baby that's in the select sire, doesn't have to show, but it was nominated, and it shows in later years it's eligible for extra money. Right. It's a lot. Although Dean Damon, I think just recently, in the last year or so, made there's going to be more money going into that pot out of the select sire money. Right. I like that. I know it's a catch-22 because you want as big a check as you can the day of the futurity no, to but, make it look good, but you also, also want to retain them. We yeah. want them to come back. We don't yeah. want them to be... You don't want them to go, know, yeah, just a big old baby win that you never hear of again. Yeah, I was all exactly. for that when it. I remember that proposal, and you know, I was all for it, and I got checks out of that from, from people I sold I babies to. I can't remember the numbers, but Dean made a motion, and it got passed a certain number out of uh, the stallion fees go to the incentive fund because we've upped our stallion fees, the stallion service fees. Okay. A certain amount of that now goes into that. So those numbers should come up for people that are riding the three and the four and the fives and the yearlings and the right. twos. Right. There's that, that, so you, you, you know, it, it pays to buy a select sire security baby or one that at least was nominated. Right. Well, look you at know, all things have changed since we're talking about history on this show. But in 82, when the select sire first was held, you know, there was no yearling lunge line. No riding classes. Yeah, no, there well, there was, was no, no riding, riding classes at first, but there was no lunge line in POAs. There was no in-hand trail. I remember when in-hand trail started and some of the people were I like, oh. I think that was because of the links, wasn't it? Uh, it could have been. Their, their proposal. Yeah. I know they showed in it all the time. And, and look at how yeah. big those classes are now, you know. so They're huge. Yeah, they're huge. They're some of the most popular classes. That's just like the adult halter classes. You know, I, at first I'm like, ah, we're starting to get into, like, the other breeds, you know, where we're going to have, like, pro, non, pro, and youth, you know what I mean? Like, you can have the ho- same horse be a three-time champion, you know, at the same show. Well, it, look at how cool those classes are though you know they're big classes too so they're big yes yeah. oh the youth classes at congress 
are huge. They're not really, I don't think, appropriate for the state level, you know, because you right. just don't have right. the numbers. But, but at, at regionals Congress, and Congress, for sure, yeah. Them, those classes are fun, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah. the thing of it is, as Tom, it was Tom, that was Tom Walmsley's idea. Okay. And as it was proven this year because my niece led her mayor in the youth class, and I don't even think they got pinned. But I brought her out and won the medium mare class. So right. there is a difference between a kid showing them right. and a youth. And, and then the kids them. can show against all age kids and against all age horses. You could bring a weanling in there. You know what I mean? And you, you know, and a yeah. and an eight year old can show against the an eighteen year old or whatever. You know, so yeah, that's cool. I I enjoy those classes. But at first, I was a little skeptical about it. But then I'm like, yep, that's. Too. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good thing. So, but it hasn't it hasn't gone to the extent that the bigger breeds have because we're not that big at the right. state level. And I, so. I mean, I don't want to get too political here, but we want. I heard somebody say at the Congress, "Well, POAs are ten years behind," and that kind of irked me because why are we? We don't want to be somebody else. You know what I mean? I think sometimes we fall into a trap. You know what I mean? Of trying to be the quarter horse or whatever, you know what I mean? We're not the Appaloosas, we're not the Paints, we're not Morgans or Frisians. We're the Pony of the Americas, you know what I mean? And we do certain I, things I, nobody else does, you know, so. I, I, I said, mm. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. I didn't have you on your day. No, what I am going to say, I do a, a, agree with you to a certain extent. Um, I think we have to progress. Right. But I also. If, if we have the numbers to progress, that would be appropriate. But right now we don't have, well, at least in my area, which right. is where, who I represent, we don't have the numbers to add those extra classes at right. this point. I don't know if the Midwest does or doesn't, but right now I, th I think the youth halter, which is what we're talking about, right, is appropriate at, at the Congress level. Um, we also have to progress at some point to a certain extent, but you're right. We need to still remember our roots and right and stay unique. And you know, yeah, thing. we've had a lot of good things come from the other. I mean, if it wasn't for quarter horses, the POAs wouldn't look like they do. You know, just like if no. it wasn't for thoroughbreds, the quarter horse wouldn't be where they are. You know, today. So, you know, if it wasn't for That's three bars, you know, one thoroughbred, there wouldn't be in all aspects of quarter horse they would look way different so well anyway yeah. tracy uh, we've been on for uh quite a while so yeah. i think i'm gonna wrap up we've been on for uh Sounds over two me. hours so you were a great guest again so uh well thank you for having me yeah you're and welcome I look forward to seeing everybody yeah everybody future. next week well good luck to you tracy and good luck thank to you. everybody else thanks tracy good night good night all right, that was Tracy Keene from Florida. Of course, she grew up in Washington in POAs, and then uh, she's in Florida now. And uh, great POA person, very knowledgeable about POAs. Of course, she's a board of director. I was trying to steer clear of, I don't, you know, we don't want to talk about politics, and that's why I didn't get her on here about that. We got on about history and the futurity. So good talk. Again, uh, like somebody, Rosalind, I think, or somebody mentioned, you know, I listened to Tracy's stories. And uh, if you want to be a guest on this show, just let me know. I mean, you can text me or email me, instant message me on Facebook, uh, or just comment on a post on the POA group, uh, POA history group, and uh, uh, stories like that. You know, we, we just need cool stories. So, again, we're going to take a little break now from, uh, from these episodes for at least two weeks. And uh, I wish everybody safe travels going to Gordyville, Illinois. And good luck to everybody at the... Select Sire and International Futurity. And uh, please, uh, if you run into people, tell them about this. If they don't know about the POA History Group, it's been around for about 10 or 11 years. It started out as POA Trivia Group, and then I changed the name a while back, years ago, to History. And then I started trying a project last year, you know, some form of a podcast. And technically, this isn't a podcast. I know it's a video, live video thing, but I call it a podcast. But we're going to get more advanced and have it on as a podcast on different, you know, wherever you find podcasts. But right now, you find it on the POA History Group. And you just go on there and all 23 episodes 
are on there. So this is the 23rd. So uh, we got a lot of good farms coming up. The Caddo's POAs, the Art and Rocky Jones and their daughter Jan Jones. That's going to be uh, one of the episodes here soon. And hopefully I can get them in the uh, studio. I'm going to have an episode about Spencer's. Uh, they're great, great family, great POA breeders, POA exhibitors. They're from Oklahoma, so I'm going to hit some Oklahoma farms for sure. Uh, we're going to have an episode about some of the northern Michigan and Michigan breeders, uh, Earl Clark and uh, Earl Clark and uh, uh, Millers were married to sisters, and one was Dots Enough Farm and one was uh, Totems. So the totem Siri and to different totems, they had different names on there. And then Dr. Armstrong might be part of that too. He owned uh, Kootenai's Wee Willie. He owned uh, Dragon for a while. He was the Oak Shadows, uh, Dr. Armstrong. So for sure those three uh, 60s farms are going to be in an episode together. So uh, we got a lot of great episodes coming up uh, all winter long. We may not have an episode every week but it'll be fairly steady. So I want to thank everyone that commented tonight. Again, thanks Tracy Keene, my friend, fellow historian, uh, great POA historian, and uh, enjoy the song, everyone. See you in a couple weeks. Good luck in Illinois.